The fans are ready in Cowtown. Historic Cowtown Coliseum behind me. We will witness the greatness that is the American. All of these contenders, all of these competitors hoping to earn their spot amongst the top 10. Tonight, this is the place. This is the stage where we will witness the history of the American Rodeo. The name is awesome. I'm a proud American. The cowboy, the cowboy boots, the cowboy hat is probably the most iconic American there is. It's the biggest single event in rodeo ever. The American platform just said, well, here it is. Let's see what you got. I told my dad right before this that I'd be honored to rope against the 10 best girls in the whole entire world. Girls that break away having a shot at $2 million. She knows all about roping. Wow. <laughs> so impressive. Are you kidding me? That's going to change somebody's life. Look at this run. Balou hustles to the third. She makes her way around. Victory for Balou. It's my dream since I've been starting riding, so I just I think I'm going to cry. I'm so happy. <laughs> Talking about building off your dad's success. So excited to be in this position. She's just loving it for sure. Look who you get to take. Guarantee one thing. You have to have to be ready for it mentally and physically. It's like a fist fight. What the hell is it all? Alma can't be stopped. We're going to stash and bashing out here. They're not the best mustaches, but see if they've been working, we can't get rid of them now. You're riding against the very best guys in the world. It's the richest rodeo in history. I wouldn't mind winning $2 million, I know that. In a building filled with so much history, we're about to witness some more tonight. Cowtown Coliseum is the vessel to a possible multi-million dollar payday inside AT&T Stadium. And those tickets to the big show will be punched tonight. Top 10 in each event moving on to Sunday. Welcome to the ninth edition of the American Rodeo, now brought to you by Teton Ridge. It is great to have you with us on a much anticipated Friday night. Alongside two-time PBR world champ Justin McBride, five-time steer wrestling champ Luke Branquino, I'm Kate Harrison. Now for the contenders here tonight, they have fought and clawed their way through the preliminaries and the semifinals to get here. The difference tonight, Justin, they've got to go against these invited athletes and they have come to play. Yep, everybody's in store for one heck of a rodeo tonight because the contenders are legit. They have been at times, Luke, in years past, the invited athletes before, so it's going to be awesome. This time they get a chance at $2 million, though. Yeah, these contenders win that invited spot. They had won that 100000 this year. They get to go that 2.1 million, and I'm excited to see how this is going to play out. It's going to be a clash of the Titans. They have all come to battle, especially contenders like Chase Outlaw. Yeah, I'm glad you used the word battle, because that's what Outlaw goes to every time he gets on the back of a bull. He gets fired up, and for good reason. I mean, he's he's been riding so good, too, throughout this thing. Whatever the bull does, he's ready for it. That's the kind of guy that's going to have a real shot. But. He's got to get past the best bull rider that the PRCA has seen since the legendary Donnie Gay. Sage Kimsey, he's out on his tracks for that eighth world title. And when we go to the women's event of breakaway roping, it's a family affair here with Cadence Crawford. Yeah, and Cadence Crawford got it done not once, but twice. She got two spots to qualify tonight. Obviously, only got to go one, take one spot. Sheeps has proved that she belongs in this building and compete against the, and can compete against the best in the world. The best of the world being her stepmom right there in Jackie Crawford. Yeah, and you could see signs of Jackie in Cadence roping. Not only her roping, but her box uh, your presence, everything about her from the nod to the rope. A lot of that comes right there from her stepmom, Jackie. So we go to the bareback riding. The best of the best are out tonight. What a show this is going to be. Yeah, it's going to be really good. And this is a big part of, of the reason why it's going to be so good. Casey Field, Luke, he's won this event two times before. To me, there's no question this is the bareback, best bareback rider we've ever got to watch. Um, it's it's going to be a dogfight, too, because there are some other guys that are going to try to take that crown away from you. Yeah, and, you know, right there, Casey holding up that check, he's won it twice. Oren Larson, he's won it. Set, he's won second in 2018, come back in 2019 and got that $100,000. But he is a contender this year. Look for Oren Larson to walk out of the... Uh, AT&T Stadium with that 2.1 million possibly. 
And there is no denying the greatness of Field. The six-time world champion is standing by with the fourth member of our broadcast team, Anthony Lucia. 2011, you win your very first world title. Ten years later, you win the sixth and become the winningest bareback rider in history. When you first started training as a young kid, could you ever dream that you would reach to the levels that you've gotten to? Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I did. When I set out to do this, I wanted to be the best. And that's part of the reason why I still am going 10 years later after winning my first world championship is um, my goals reminding me where I, when I started and how I started. And uh, the motivation still there that the same people that supported me then are still supporting me now. And it, it's a it's a fun little road I've been on. And, it, and it, it's exciting. Every time I get to the rodeo, I'm still getting the butterflies before I get on. It doesn't start back in the locker room. It starts about when they're one before me, yeah. but it, it's still a lot of fun. You've had so much success inside of AT&T Stadium. How excited are you to be now in the same spot to get back there and do it all over again? Hey, I love this rodeo. The American, the cowboy, the most iconic symbol in America right there. And then to go to and ride at 100,000, new shotgun and all the little trinkets that come with it. It's awesome. The environment there, Teton Ridge getting behind it, something new, new money in the game. It's all good. When you say the word cowboy, it's hard not to think of your dad, Louie. How big do you think he's smiling watching you do the things that you're doing? Well, I got cold chills pretty early tonight, <laughs> thanks. But uh, no, he's, uh, I can guarantee he's pretty happy and smiling and looking down on me and, and proud of me. And I know he was wish, wish he could be here with me in person, but I feel his spirit with me on the back of the buck and shoots at all times. We all get chills when we watch you do what you do. We can't wait to watch Casey Field tonight. Team roping is just complicated. You got two horses, two guys, two personalities, and then a steer. It's the only true team event. That many animals and humans competing at once. It's a game of variables and execution without mistake. There is no rodeo like the rodeo you're about to witness. 73 combined world champions by 28 different champions. And it all starts with a team roping tonight presented by Smarty. Some of those gold buckles you're about to witness right here in the first event. But what's so great about the American, we also have 59 rodeo athletes making their American debuts. And the first team we're going to get started with is one of those. It's the Young Guns, Chase Webster, Zachary Lewis, who are going to set the stage here. And they earn their way here courtesy of their Junior NFR Championship. This crowd, do they even know what is about to be in store? From Casey Field to Caleb Driggers to Junior NFR qualifiers all going at it together. Yeah, look, you got great rodeo fans in the state of Texas and they're about to be in for a real treat, Lou. Yeah, they got great, we got great rodeo fans, but we also got great Cowboys starting with this junior NFR team. First team out competing against guys like Bubba Bucklew, Joseph Harrison, the world champions, Caleb Drigger, Junior Nagara. How cool is that for this team to be able to be on this stage? You wanna know just how good you are. Throw your loop against the champs. It's Webster. Oh, Webster Lewis, not their night tonight. Could be first time jitters, but it could also just be team roping. It's gonna be a no time for the young guns here. Yeah, and started off a little rough. That steer didn't quite split the gates, maybe like they were thinking, and header got off the corner quick, had to pick up on his horse, broke the bear. And when you pick up on your horse, everything goes up, everything goes back. It's hard to get back forward, get that tip down. It's the top 10 in every event that move on from here to Championship Sunday inside AT&T Stadium. Tyler Wade, Trey Yates, they've been to the big show in Las Vegas. They want to go to the big show here in Arlington. Yeah, you know, they got a pretty good steer, steer left sharp. Oh, right, Tyler just missed that one. Horse kind of got trapped in behind, but behind him, didn't he, Justin? Yeah, and, and you know, that's, that's a tough break there because you, hey, wait, that's a guy that reaches. Everybody knows it. And Trey Yates has become one of the most consistent healers in the game. A no time for Wade and Yates. Two up, two down. But if you're going to bet for anyone here in this American setting, this is the guy that knows how to get to the big show. Clay Tryon, Jake Long. Clay has been to every single American. He is one of three that we're calling the Divine Nine. Casey Field, Clay Tribe, Tough Cooper have been to all of them. But guys, 
He's never made it to the short go, ever. Yeah, Anthony, that's hard to believe about this. It is hard to believe, and Clay Tryon two days ago didn't know if he was going to compete at this year's American. Not because anything was wrong with him, but because just two days ago, his eldest son, Tyler, actually had a thumb injury, and it has been a mental fight to get to this point, but clearly Clay Tryon was able to block it out, compartmentalize it, and get the job done. Well, you talk about just a businessman's run right there. Clay scored great, got it on that steer, but Jake Long, his whole career has impressed me. This guy is an absolute stud on the heel end. Tryon wants that number nine. Long lets it go quick, and that results in a four point, excuse me, 5.14 for Tryon and Long. That right now are only time on the leaderboard. Well, what about Nelson Wylett and Tyler Worley? Again, a team that can make some moves here. And a great steer. If they don't get trapped in the wall and get faced around there, great run right there. And they knew they had a good steer. They'd been fast on this steer in this building. Nelson did a good job, especially that wall in that corner comes up so fast, Justin. He got his horse faced around there pretty darn good. Yeah, steps at him right out of there, keeps him on a short rope, though. And then Tyler Worley does just such a great job of cleaning it up. Whoop. Good run. 5.43, Wyatt and Worley are contenders. So they're keeping that dream of $2 million alive. They head to the top of the leaderboard. Ren Richard, Jeremy Bueller on the heel in 2016 world champ NFR average title. Luke, is that really Jeremy Bueller? I don't know, I've never seen him without a beard. <laughs> Oh, really oh, whipped it off right there. Man. Didn't have a lot of action on his rope. That curl didn't come up and just kind of bounced on that steer's head. We're going to get to see it again. Good start, runs in there. But watch the action that he doesn't get that, doesn't even get the curl, just kind of slaps that steer down in the shoulder, jerks his slack, and it pops it off that horn. Richard Bueller going to take a no time here. Top 10 moving back. Clean runs are the name of the game for Andrew Ward and Buddy Hawkins. You know, a solid team right here. Good start right there. See if getting cleaned up on the back end, and he sure does. And we've seen this, the last three perfs coming into it. We've seen some struggles, and we've seen some guys just get good starts. And you know, the first couple teams out had some tough luck. Then we had Clay try and do his job. Nelson Wyatt, Tyler Worley do theirs. Top 10 move out of 16. So we'll see if we can get it done. And then you get a steer like this every now and then. It just kind of lopes out there, waits for everything, and just lets you do your job. Hopkins. Makes quick work on the heel end, results in a 5.02. That slides Warden Hawkins into number two. Britton Hall, Chase Tryon. Oh man, that's something you don't see out of Chase Tryon hardly ever right there. And a chance to advance just slipped through his fingers right there. Yeah, it is, man. Cracks it on him right there, got him on a short line. And Luke? Uh, I, I'm a loss of words right there. Looked like maybe a little out of time with that steer. Didn't get that tip through. And obviously, uh, you don't do that, you ain't gonna catch. No time for Hall and try it. We were talking about those gold buckles. You've got quite a few here. Clay Smith, Jade Corkhill, both been to the American many times before, seven and eight times respectively for Smith and Corkhill. And this is one of those teams to me, Luke, no matter what the setup, where you're at, whatever the situation, this is one of them that I always put my money on. Oh, you have to, and with the steer they have drawn, you're gonna win. They have a steer they were four flat on, or four on and broke the barrier. But I promise you, Clay Smith's gonna score sharp right here. Get him on the tight rope and let Jade get that hop he needs to catch those feet. Smith got set, there was the nod. If I was wrong about the short rope, that steer was trying to get what? away from him, but Jade Corkill does what he always does right there. Great run, great shots. That's, you know what, we've, we've been talking about this a lot all week, guys, and, and when things aren't perfect, the real champions, they still rise to the occasion and get the job done. Yeah, and you know, with that steer on that long of a rope, Clay did a great job hopping him off and letting Chase right, right there. Great job, good run. And then Cork Hill to get that quick flag. That results in a 4.88. As we go to Caleb Driggers, Junior Nogueta, 2021 PRCA World Champion. That momentum has continued over. And if it continues all the way to Sunday, it could be a big payday for these world champs. Wow, look at this steer. Left sharp, loping out through there. You know, this steer, they were 3-3 three, three on, broke the bear. They knew they didn't have to do that. Get a good start, and the rest takes care of itself for a team like that. What a great run, smart run right there. Yeah, and I watch all the Brazilian bull riders, they show me videos all the time of all the great ropers that are in Brazil. 
This junior's been doing this shot right here for a long time. Nogueira is not backing down. That showed up in a big way. 4.75 for the pros. Here we go. Brock Hansen, Clay Futrell, they're contenders. Two million on the line. Longer than they want it to be, they'll have to wait and see if that's enough to get to AT&T Stadium. 6.10 for Hansen and Futrell. You know, you can see Brock right there when he dropped. Horse didn't quite leave as sharp as he wanted, but he has snapped it on that head. Every time we've every watched time. him. And short rope right there gets yes, picked sir. up, and good shot right there by his partner, Clay. And Right now, sixth place might not be fast enough to move on. And we're about halfway through the teams as we head now. Eric Rogers, Peyton Bray. We mentioned World Championships. You got it with Bray. He just won it in 2021 with Eric Rogers. So, man, this team, they were just successful in AT&T a year ago. Can they do it again here now? Wow. Yeah, I didn't see that coming. No, and especially as good of a start he had. Now that steer did step at Eric. But that's a shot, you know, they get all the time. They just come from these little building rodeos, Fort Worth, San Antonio. But see that steer just stepped at him and rope just hit him. Yeah, that steer steps at me. Okay, I get it. We got an excuse to miss, but not that guy. He's, wow, that's amazing. Rogers and Bray, they were the reigning American champions. Pardon me, world champ, American champ, the reigning world champions. They are not going to return as we go now. Tanner James, Phoenix Everano. Tanner James does a good job, lets Esther get out in front of him, just behind the barrier, but slick half head and still handles him off good right there. You know, partner comes in there with a leg, and you know, Phoenix let one get away from him. Right now, they're still advancing. 9.51 with that penalty for James and Everano. As we're closing in on the contender round and the team roping, four teams remaining. Wyatt Worley at the top with that 4.53. Corey Kidd. Lane Mitchell, look for them to push it here. Got to reach for this one. Get some turn, got to be quick on the heel in. Two, drop that flag. 5.5 for Kidd and Mitchell. Now we're in the situation, Justin, where a 6-1 is winning seventh. Three guys left. You don't need to back off because this is where things could go bad. They did a great job getting through this run, but you still need to be a little bit closer to that barrier, in my opinion. Luke, this is the only time you will ever hear me say this. The team roping is a little like the bull ride where you never know what's going to happen. <laughs> what about these contenders next? Joseph Harrison, he is up with Bubba Buckaloo. He won it all at the American in 2020. He knows what he has to do here. Clean on the front end. Clean on. The healing almost going to be a leg for Harrison and Buckaloo here, 9.06. You know, right here, look at Bubba. That horse is wanting to get left. Steer hits out there good, but that rope was high on the inside leg right there hey, and, and on the toenail. The toe. But right now with that leg, there's still an eighth place. How many teams we got left? Three, Three teams left. Oh. So oh. Buckaloo and Harrison are going to have to Hold their breath to see if that 9.06 will hold in the top 10. We've got nine runs so far, which means nine advancing. These last three teams want to make sure that they make a difference in that leaderboard here. But the top seven on your screen, they're already in. They're safe, they're secure. Coleman Proctor, Logan Medlin. It was Proctor 2019. He was a champion as a qualifier with Ryan Moe. Won 433,000. Oh. Such a great start for Coleman right there. Charged that front end, and I honestly don't know what happened. You don't see Coleman miss that shot right there. Not Just pleased with that one at all. Split his horns a little bit, rope wrapped around, and come off that uh, right horn. The final two teams remaining here on a Friday night at the American Rodeo. One spot still open. Only nine times so far. We're taking 10 on Sunday. Dustin, Dustin Agasquiza, well, this Travis could Graves. Definitely change up the lead. Oh, yes. What well, another great team right here. Let's see what Dustin gets an okay start. Steers kind of out there in front of him. But Travis Graves will get him, I promise you, every time. That's just knowing what you need, right? Like, and we talked about it last night, with what they needed to do to advance. These last two teams knew, get a clean catch, we're moving on. 
it's a businessman decision for Egasquiza and Graves, and it pays off in a 6.17. Did just what he needed to, took that extra swing on the head end, cleaned it up on the heel end. That sends them to AT&T Stadium. The crazy thing is some of these guys aren't used to safety and up. They're always going at it one-headers. That was a great job right there by Dustin and Travis. There is one team left, and they can make an impact here. Cody Snow, Wesley Thorpe. Good shot by Cody. Another clean run, moves him on. Wesley Thornton did what he knows how to do. Yeah, and look, you know, these, these are the best guys in the world. You see them making these runs where they're laying back a little bit. But to me, that's, that's where you see the real champions, when they know what's at stake and they can control what happens. And controlling it is exactly right because we've talked about it at every event. You take a chance, things can go bad. Snow and Thorpe moving on. There's your 10 that are headed to AT&T Stadium in the team roping. Much more to come here. The invites want to make their mark just as OCM Baloo has done. But what about Onion Ring? The reigning World Champion Saddlebron course will be out tonight. And Chase Outlaw has got the fireworks. It all started with that good breakfast on a Friday morning. Join the American action by signing up for Ride to Glory, the game. Predict the scores and times of the sport's greatest athletes, and you could win incredible prizes, including a 2022 Polaris Sportsman. It's free, easy, and there's nothing to download. Just go to ridetoglory.com or scan the QR code to play today. Bareback riding underway. Jamie Howlett is where we're starting. Makes the whistle here aboard Zulu Warrior. Yeah, we're, we're starting out really, really strong. I've been so impressed with Jamie Howlett. This guy come in with an injured groin, and in any of the rough stock events, that's a tough injury to deal with right there. And pretty good score coming in, 81 and a half, but I'm telling you guys, it's going to get salty tonight. Really, really good horses and great bareback riders. It's a great recipe. I think it's I think it's going to get a little tougher than 81 and a half. Luke. Well, yeah, and you can look down the list of stock and know that the stock, average stock score is going to be well above 40 points. So these guys are going to have to, you know, pack their lunch, see what they can get done. And be mistake free, too, because, like I said, the horses are going to be awesome. This is going to be another one. You see me from Calgary here. Check them out. Big, strong, a little faster, a lot of kick, though. And as a bareback rider, you got to be so fast, so aggressive. You know, with the kind of guys that we're seeing out tonight, you know, the invited guys being here, we've been talking about Casey Field. Don't forget about Tim O'Connell, three-time world champ. I mean, it is going to get tough. And so anytime you see, like, a guy's foot drop or then just hanging the neck even for a jump, that's going to show up in the score. 80 and a half for Kate Sonier. 10 out of 16 bareback riders advance to Sunday. Right here it is the bareback riding presented by JCB. Sonier has to wait and see what that does. As we go to Jacob Rain. He is aboard Yippee Kibitz. Check this out. Hey, this has got a chance to be big. Great horse right there. You see these horses that are starting off straight, staying out of the fence. If everything will keep going like this, we've got a shot for some big scores. Well, and these horses, to me, looking at the list, are a little bit older, aren't they? They kind of know how to perform these smaller races. Oh, yeah, they're, see, I mean, they, you see these things at the NFR, all the big rodeos. I mean, you look at the stock contractors, Calgary, Harry Bold. You know, it, it's going to be good. Rain rises way above the rest of the field. 87 points. You're looking at a contender for that $2 million. Has to feel good about his chances at AT&T Stadium. Three contenders to start as we go to another one in Jayco Roper. Finished second in the semifinals. He's got the momentum as he gets set on Vegas Confused. Well, and this is the first picket horse we're seeing out. And I was talking to Clayton Bigelow before the rodeo, and he's like, I don't even care what their name is. As long as Pickett owns them, I know I got a chance to win. Roper in position. He said, let's go. And this is why they all want to get on these horses. 
And you know, look, that, that's a good ride. Make no mistake about it, that's a good ride. But when that horse stalls out like that right there for you, this level of competition, you have got to crack them off of your rigging handle. And what I mean by that is your spurs and his, his right leg's really good. Left might have been a little more locked down. And like I said, that is a good ride, but we're gonna see some great rides. Well, and you see him shaking his head. He knew yep. that he let some get away from him. Some yep. points right there. It's an 82 for Roper. Right now, that slides him into the number two spot. But we've got a lot of gold buckles coming up and a lot of past American champs as well. Seven of the last eight American champions are in this field tonight. Someone who hopes to join that list, Garrett Shadbolt, was a finalist in 2019, wants to make that big show. Can he do it on Cajun Queen? Yes, he can do it. This guy, I've watched him the last few years, and he's just continually got better and better. Kind of got an old school style, reminds you a lot of the great Clint Corey. Sets up, looks down the barrel. That's a fantastic ride on a really good horse. Out of the, all the bareback riders we've seen, he, I thought, has controlled his body as good as, or better than any any of them. His feet were phenomenal right there. No doubt about it. And, and watch his upper body control, too. See, he doesn't get tipped over completely backwards, but he's still able to stay under that rigging and lift, lift on his feet, get a hold of that horse. Chad Bolt sails past this one in a big way. Lots of smile about right there for the 2019 Rookie of the Year. 87 points, that ties him at the top of the leaderboard with Jacob Rank. I mentioned seven of the eight past. American champs are competing here. One of those is Tim O'Connell. He did it in 2017, and he is next to go aboard Painted Playgirl. Look, this guy right here is a fierce competitor. Comes from the great state of Iowa, grew up wrestling, and if anybody out there knows anything about wrestling in Iowa, you learn to compete at an early age. The three-time world champion knows how to compete. Painted Playgirl going right along with them. Right to the whistle. Could it be right to the pay window? Hey, I, and I don't know how he does this because about halfway through it, he hits her over top of the net. And most guys, game over on a horse bucking that hard and a guy that's exposing themselves that much. Uh, for him to just snap right back the next jump, they're going to dock him for it. But that's that's pretty right amazing there. just to come right back at him. Six qualified rides in the bareback riding so far on a Friday night inside the historic Cowtown Coliseum. Cole Reiner is our next invited athlete to go. He is aboard, look at this one, Copycat Valley. Yeah, great old horse from the Bold Rodeo Company. And Luke, I've been so impressed with this Cole Reiner. He comes from bareback country, and, and he's lived up to that. Yeah, in the last couple years, he has shown up and showed out everywhere he's been. This guy, a couple more, another year under his belt, he's going to be a contender for a gold buckle. Yeah, no doubt about it. I, I really believe that with this kid. And a nice horse right here. And another, another guy that grew up with a wrestling background. You're going to see a lot of that in the rough stock events. The guys that excel in it, they've got that foundation early on in their life. They know how to compete. They know how to be disciplined. And they know how to be tough. Reiner rides and Copycat Valley did his job. Judges still putting that score in. We'll bring it to you as soon as we have it here. 83 and a half. And this one might have been just a little too nice for this pin. I mean, that's a cool old horse right there. Jump and kick, really flashy, but maybe just a little bit soft today. 83 and a half puts Reiner in that number four spot. It's the top 10 that punched their ticket to the American finals on Sunday. Well, it's Tilden Hooper who's got the call to go next. Your 2021 American champion. Can he go back to back? The horse he has, New Scarlet, is this enough to get him there? Yes, I think it is. And notice the name again, Pickett Rodeo Company. These guys get fired up to get on these good horses. And Look, for me, Luke, Tilden, I've, I've watched this guy's entire career from the time he's 18 years old to where he's at right now. And to see the injuries that he's been through, it's a little bit like Chase Outlaw. Like, they were serious injuries. Like, maybe your career is over. And not only did he come back from them, 
but he came back way better than he was before. Well, and you talked about, you know, Casey Field's work regiment, his, how he eats, how he prepares himself, not only in the arena, but months before, you know, to get to the spot. Tilden's one of those guys. He works out, he tries to stay in shape, and, you know, they're they're good buddies, they're best friends. Yep, that's who that's who's he's around, and you can tell Casey's had a huge influence on Tilden's life, and it, it's been really fun to watch just how great Tilden has become. What a shot, eight-time NFR qualifier, six-time American qualifier. Taking a little bit of that extra time in the shoe because when you're going for money like this, oh, you got to have it be red. in there. Hooper has done it before just a year ago to win the 100,000. Can he do it again? Aboard new Scarlet, Hooper with the slam dunk. That one came with conviction. Yeah. That Look, these, these top guys, that's why it's so cool for me to see a contender like Warren Larson, because I feel like that's the kind of level of contender you're going to have to have to mix it up with these guys right here. You know, watching his ride, watch his feet hit that horse down in the neck, and he has time to stay because he's ahead of him so much. Great ride by Tilden Hooper. 85 and a half. Justin just can't get enough of that hair, can you? I, I knew the hair. I wasn't even going to bring the hair up. They're always talking about Tilton's hair. Everybody knows Tilton's got great hair. You mentioned his good buddy. We're halfway through the bareback riding. Guess who's coming up? It's your six-time world champ, Casey Field. Much more to come before he rides. Dreaming is everything to me. Without dreaming, I wouldn't be a winner. Bareback riding is very fast, it's aggressive. You don't see anything that's going on. I have to be almost a third person and dream about what I could imagine me looking like going across the arena. He dreams about it, he constantly thinks about it, he writes it down, and he wins a rodeo, but he's already won it a thousand times in his mind. Being able to do it every time and on every kind of horse, you know, the easy ones, the hard ones, big rodeos, the little rodeos, and I've had a front row seat watching him do it for, for the last 13, 14 years. The American is a, a special rodeo to me. My dad passed away in February of 2016, and then they did a big, huge tribute. Every contestant came and laid a white rose on his saddle. And uh, <clears throat> that was a, a powerful scene for me to watch. And then having to go and get on a bucking horse, I didn't want to do it. And overcoming that right there, has taught me a lot about who I am. And then to come back in 2018, I dreamed of getting on a big gray horse named Virgil and, and winning a million dollars, and I bounced back from two years of a slump. From 18 on, it lit a fire underneath me, and then I won the world in 2020 and 21, and, and a lot of my confidence came from winning that, that half a million dollars that day at the American. The event of bareback riding is looking more open and better than it ever has. These young kids coming up are pushing me to my limits. They're making me get in the gym earlier, staying 30 minutes longer. His dedication before he arrives for a rodeo is something that I think is truly amazing and seeing all the hard work he puts in, I've, I've never seen anything like it. When I do climb in the buck and shoots, it's game on, get tough finish strong, try harder than you ever have. I love what I'm doing. I haven't had so much fun riding bucking horses like this ever. It's just like, <laughs> yeehaw, let's do it again. How can you not like that guy? There is no denying the dominance, the dedication of field. Yeah, and look, Luke, to me what's so impressive is not only has he mastered the physicality in, in everything of this sport, but he's mastered the mental side as well. And that's the toughest part about being a rodeo cowboy, going up and down the road, being away from your family. You know, that's where he not only is a world champion in the arena, but outside as well. The American Rodeo, the championship, ran right through Richie Champion. He was the very first $1.1 million winner. He did it at 21 years old. 
since then, multiple million dollar champions have been crowned, but it all started with him. He has not qualified for the short go since winning that 1.1 million. He wants it here and he's got Scarlet Bell to do it. Yeah, and look, Richie was the original contender, right? He was the guy that showed everybody what was possible. But make no mistake, he was not unknown coming into that thing that year. The guys, the great bareback riders then knew about Richie Champion. He had been coming around a little bit. Everybody knew he could really ride, and he's been banging heads with them ever since. Ever since, yes, and every rodeo you go to, you know he's gonna be there, he's gonna, he's on a good horse, he's gonna have a chance to win first. Yeah, you're gonna see him at the NFR every year, making good money. Every time, like you said, you give him the right horse, he's got a chance to win it. 87 is what's sitting at the top of the leaderboard. Eight have gone, eight to go. Champion, can he contend here? Scarlet Bell with the moves. It's in his name and his writing, guys. These guys are so good. I, I, I just love to watch the bareback ride and the bronc ride coming up. When you can showcase the best guys and get them all in the same building, and get them on great horses. There is nothing better to watch. Well, um, for those young kids out there, look at he, how he turns his toes out and just gets a hold with his spurs right there. Great ride by Richmond Champion. 86 points slots him into that third position. So he is safe, guys. Champion well on his way to AT&T Stadium. The top three have already punched their ticket. You've mentioned the horsepower we're seeing and witnessing tonight. We'll continue to see. What about Shady Knights? Clayton Bigelow has to be happy with this one. Yeah, this is one of those matchups that jumped off the page at me when I got the day sheet earlier. And, and talking to Bigelow, he's fired up. He knows the chance he's got. Everybody's pretty excited to watch this matchup. Well, like we talked about, you look at the list and the guys that have them drawn, but this one, like I said, really pops out for anybody that knows anything about bareback riding. The 2019 world champion has almost tasted American sweetness. He's been second before. He wants it all this time around. Big low with the big moves aboard Shady Knights. Oh, and Shady Knights a little bit softer for what I was expecting. Um, still good, but I was wanting to see great, and, and so was Big Low, man. He, he made a, a perfect ride. And just how big will it be for Big Low? 85 and a half, putting him into that number four position overall. Yeah, and that's, look, that's a good score right there. And Clayton makes a flawless ride on a good horse, but I thought we had a chance to be maybe push 90 right there. You and the judges are a little bit off. <laughs> Imagine that. <laughs> but no, 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 the judges got that one right. They did? Yes, they uh, Hey, we got that on hey, record. I give them credit where credit's due, man. Cole Franks, the young gun, what waves he's been making. He's your 2021 Rookie of the Year. Going for his first American, hard to believe, no appearances yet. Could this be it? Could this be the ticket to the big show? Can Knight Delta take him there? Cole Franks rides so good. I've been so impressed watching his career getting started. Dad was a great saddle bronc rider, now a coach, and you know Cole has just followed right along. And he's he's a he's already at such a young age, capable of winning, and we've already seen him make his first NFR. You're seeing why. My career when I started in Casey Fields was up. I'd go to the fence to watch the bareback ride. Now the older I got, these summer rodeos when they said Cole Franks, I was at the yeah. fence to watch this cowboy too. No doubt about it. That eight second sprint pays him here. Frank's 85 and a half. That puts him in a three way tie for fourth right now. Well, Jess Pope, two time NFR qualifier, made it to the top eight at the American a year ago. This time around, he's got Nightstar. This is turned into one of the premier bareback riders in the world right here. Uh, he's won average titles at the, at the national finals. It, he's gotten to where he handles every kind of horse. Doesn't matter, strong, showy, has some moves, whatever it is, Jess Pope handles every one of them the same. The top 10 moving on to Sunday. 81 and a half is a score to beat right now to get you there. But Pope, of course, hopes to put up a much higher score than that. And you can hear him in there asking, like, is this, am I good to take her right here? And they're, they're giving him some instruction of no, get her up, get her right. 
Because the start is so important. We can talk about it's time to bench a lot, but in the rough stock, it is important. Nice star hesitated there. Pope with the patience. Will it pay off? Makes it to the whistle. Is it going to be enough here? I, 81 and a half is what it's taking right now, Kate. It's going to be right there somewhere at it, maybe a little over it, because Jess Pope's such a great bareback rider is why, too. Weird start here, slow to get going. Pretty strong through here, too. You know, that pause right there, and I know he's been on this horse before, but that pause, that gives you more time to have things run through your head. Jess Pope didn't seem to affect him right there. So, these, these guys are so good at staying focused, staying patient, wait, wait, then fire. For Pope, 84 and a half. Top six are safe right now. Pope City, number seven. Well, Tanner Oz, he's won it all at the American for 100,000, but now he's a contender, guys. He's got that $2 million dream alive right here aboard Night Flight. Yeah, big time matchup here for Austin. This is a story of Austin's career to me. Like, He's one of those guys that he wins something huge, and you're like, uh, duh, why didn't I see that coming? Because he's grown so good his entire career. Oh, big move out of the gate for him. What a spur ride the American champ is making. Outstanding job right here. You watch him, he's got his chin buried the whole time. He doesn't give up an inch. So strong, all these guys are so strong, so fast, strong with their feet, and just buries his chin and takes it to him. Oz not only advances, but skyrockets to the top, 87 and a half for him. He's moving on to Sunday. You know, and we have Jess Pope and Tim O'Connell in that eight, nine spot. When you have guys like Casey Field, Oren Larson coming in behind you, that is definitely not a safe spot to be right now. No, and, and you know, that's, it's so fun for me to watch this set because the thing that's got O'Connell kind of in the hot seat was a mistake. You know, it wasn't for an inferior horse or anything like that. He had a chance and just one little bobble in there. Oz might be two days away from a potential $2 million paycheck as we go now to Caleb Bennett. He's aboard Weenie. Bennett, he's, he's been helping me out, go, go through all the horses and tell me the ones to watch for, the great matchups, all these things. And I was asking him today, and he's like, and you could tell he wasn't wanting to point himself out, but he's like, uh, I got to be honest with you, I've got a really good one right here. Wow. What a jump. 83 and a half is your score to beat to make it back on Sunday. Bennett with a big one here. Strong, strong right there. And that rare out kind of got him back and out of position. And it, I mean, to me, it looked like he never did get back to where he could just get him set, hold, and then get him back up to the rigging handle. Yeah, and it was a rare with a big kick too, kind of some weird timing. And yeah, that was strong and moving. 80 points right there for Caleb Bennett. That is not going to move him on. As we move now to the birthday boy, Casey Field. Can he do it again? Well, I think there's no doubt about it, he can do it again. We're calling this guy the GOAT, the greatest of all time, and for good reason. You look at what he's done, you're seeing Bruce Ford, Joe Alexander, both five-time world champs. They have influenced generations of guys, and then the great Bobby Mode, who, Luke, you got to watch for a long time. You're seeing the round wins there, and then right here, you talk about influence, the great Louis Field. That's his boy, Casey Field, and Louie got it all started with this kid right here, and now he is the greatest of all time. Field has made his way to the Big Show at t Stadium every single year, which is just as impressive. Seven of those eight years, he's made it back to the short go. Two of those, he's won it all. Once for 100000 once for $433,000. You heard him at the top of the show. He loves this format. It means so much to him. He's overcome such big moments right here in Fort Worth to get to those paychecks. To do it here, it's got to be a board topped off. 83 and a half is the marker for that top 10. He's got enough to do that, Luke. Yeah, for sure. And you know, the thing about Casey getting that horse fighting him in the shoot, he takes his time. Look at him go at him right here, guys. 
just a joy. That's just, I mean, that's just, that's just greatness. You know, that's a, that's a fantastic course for him and allows him to show you what he's capable of. And, and I love in the feature about this guy. He's talking about these young kids are pushing him. Well, guess what? That's because of what he's done. He has elevated this sport. He's elevated the entire Western industry. And that's what the greats do. They change the game. Field finishes strong here. He's never missed a trip to at t Stadium, and he's not missing this one. No need to blow your candles, birthday boy. Your wish already came true. We'll see you on Sunday, 88 and a half. What a guy, what a ride. Waving at people. I mean, it's the, another day at the office, man. Field at the top of the leaderboard. The cutoff, Tim O'Connell at 84 points. Orrin Larson is a contender, the last one who can move that line on the leaderboard. You know, and Orrin, to me, has got it going on. This guy's been phenomenal for a lot of years. He's also an American champion when he was invited. It's going to be fun to see this guy have a run at that 2.1 million, but it's got to start right here. He's going to grit it out aboard Faded Knight. Larson wants to go to the lead, but will it be enough here? I don't know if there's enough kick at the end of that from the horse, but or Larson Drecker, look, I think he's going to move on. I just don't know if he's going to, he's going to win the night right here. Man, he really goes after this horse with his feet. And oh. like you said, look at the, the the kick just isn't quite there. That's and that's gonna be the difference, right? Because Orrin Larson did everything he could. The cutoff, 84 .9. points. Larson, 83. He is oh. not going to be moving on this year. But who is moving on? The original American champion, Ameri uh, Richie Champion, has got another shot at the big show. He's standing by with Anthony. <laughs> Richmond champion on a night like this, when so much is at stake, this level of bucking horses, this level of riders, how exciting is it to be a part of it? Oh, it's what we dream of. And you bring in this small atmosphere, we're all fired up. You can't beat it. A moment ago, you talked about Casey Field, his ride. It's got to make you feel like you're a part of something special. Yes, you've done amazing things. The very first American champ, million dollar winner. But to be witnessing Casey Field and what he's doing, it's got to be pretty neat to you. Yeah, he's, he's awesome to watch. He's a great competitor. You know, you love being around him. He drives you to be better. And uh, just want to wish him a happy 45th birthday. <laughs> I'm not quite sure the math is correct on that. But either way, Richie Champion, Casey Field, we'll, we'll see them on Sunday. Champion right there in the mix. But it's Casey Field on top on a Friday night in the historic Cowtown Coliseum, 88 and a half. He loves it. We'll see the six-time champ on Sunday to go for a shot at another American championship. What a week it's already been. It's time for the loop back presented by Yeti. Yeah, and you want to talk about two contenders that came out of the semifinals from Wednesday. Jacob Edler, he doesn't care, but he's going to throw them one at a time and get to AT&T Stadium. Right here, Trevor Hale had two spots, advanced twice, comes back once, made a great run on a strong calf like there. Right here, I'm excited to see what they can do tonight. It's veterans and young guns making up this field of steer wrestlers, 18 we're going to see here tonight. It is the steer wrestling brought to you by Durango Boots. We mentioned the contenders. We've had contenders now move on in both of the two events for that shot at $2.1 million. Peyton McIntyre, he is one of those. Yeah, and Peyton McIntyre came out the other night, had a little stumble with his feet, but still made it back tonight. He's going to have to clean that up. He has a chance right here. The steer tries. Cameron Mormon, 4-7 on him. But Peyton's got a good horse he had just got from Curtis Cassidy. He gets, oh, his horse turns his head right there. And now you're off to the races, but he's going to still try it. Oh. But we talked about that, Justin. Ten guys move on. Out of 16, or I'm sorry, we have 18. You have to take a chance when you get down there. Got to take it in any little mistake, right? Like whether it comes for you or your your horse, it could cost you. And we've seen it right there. His horse picked his head up, moved his chest over to the wall, paid late. You know, that's unfortunately for Peyton. That's just a mental mistake right there.
McIntyre won't make it here. It's going to be a no time from one contender to another. Guys, already through two events, 10 contenders moving on to Sunday. Can Mike McGinn be the next? And a rematch. He had this steer Wednesday. 4-4 on him, come, you know, in the semifinals. Drew him again and beat his time from the last time he ran him. That's what I like to see, getting better as you're progressing. And look, Kate, you mentioned the contenders. We've already got 10 moving on. We talked about it at the top. This is a stout, stout field of contenders. And we just saw one right there and begin. 4.19, so that sets the bar on the leaderboard. It's the top 10 coming back. You saw him in the loop back, Jacob Edler. Got a great horse, great hazer on the other side. If he gets out of the barrier right here, this steer's in a bind. Great run by Jacob Edler. I think he might have got off the corner a little too soon, though. Oh, no, you're right, he did. Would have been a 3.98 with that penalty, 13.98 for Edler. Wow, watch this shot right here. Casper is so sharp off the corner right there, and that steer was very average leaving. He just barely nicked it, but it doesn't matter if you break it by a centimeter, you break it by a mile, it's still plus 10. I just want to throw my headset down right now. You know, there's no doubt about Jacob Edler's ability. This kid won the world's championship in 20 when it was in Arlington. He's a legitimate chance at a world championship riding that horse with Tyler Pearson on the other side. And I really wanted another Edler interview. Yes! Those are good. He'll have much more to say at the American Rodeo in the years to come. As we go now to Will Loomis, he was up here talking to you. Luke, you giving him tips still? Oh, yeah, I'll give him everything they want because I live through these guys now. <laughs> he had a steer yellow lord and broke the barrier on. Steer leaves real average. Levi, Eli got off the corner just a little bit too soon. I was just trying to help him on the start, and these boxes are so short that if you get off there too early, you can't pick up in time to get, get out of the barrier. Won the NFR average title just a season ago in Las Vegas. 43 seconds on 10 head. Averages four seconds a run. Loomis knows what to do in these high pressure situations. He proved it 10 days in a row. Yeah, he does. And one thing I love about Will Loomis is he bulldogs like a little guy if he needs to. Good run right there. With the barriers, and we've seen things kind of go, you know, funky in the steer wrestling. That that time's a little longer than he wanted, but he still might have a chance to move on. Yeah, and I like you saying he bulldogs like a little guy, because take my word, everybody at home, if you can't tell, I met him in person today. He is not a little guy. <laughs> he is, you know, technically sound for as big as he is. Right here, you can see that steer really kind of want to pull his head down, and then right around the corner, throw his nose up at him, and had no momentum to get him off the corner. Will Luke, did a good job. Who's taller, Luke? You or Will? Well, Will. Will Towers over me. He's got gotcha. Towers. Well, Jesse Brown, another one of our invited athletes that's right here. That's because his, uh, he uh, finished sixth in the world standings a year ago, going for his second American appearance. Does he have the steer to do it here? He has a chance. They were 4.96 uh, Sterling Lee, but he is riding Tyson. PRCA Horse of the Year, Curtis Castle on the other side. And that's huge right there. He misses the barrier just a little bit, but Jesse is so strong. And talk about one of those guys like Casey Fields that works at it, works out in the gym, that's Jesse Brown. And what a horse. Even just missing the barrier, Tyson just took him right there to his spot. Yeah, caught up good. We're gonna see here, kind of misses it just a tick. Watch us just step into him right there. Tyson just charges through the hole, lets him get his feet on the ground. Decent where sometimes horses feel those steers step at him, they're gonna pick their head up, not Tyson. 4.78 for Brown. That slides him into the number two spot right now. Three clean runs on the board as we go next to Tyler Pearson. 2017 world champion. You know, and this is a steer that I, I don't really care for. They were six, long six on him. Wants to step out again. And Tyler actually ran this steer San Antonio, and that's what he tried oh. to do to him at San Antonio. Steer wants to come around the corner real fast and then get sprawled out on the back end. And, you know, unfortunately for Tyler, steer didn't have the action, but starts in here, got his head down. So what can you do there, Luke? I mean, what what is the answer for that? You know, that's a tough one. You almost have to roadblock him and not let his hind end get by so fast. Or when he starts to come, you need to be on that nose, be ready to finish it and get it out of there early. McBride wants to see a rewrite. <laughs> <laughs> he throw a flag, he challenge you, he do something. Hey, gotta try it, right? Oh yeah. 
We have contenders and then we have invited, but we also have junior NFR champions that have won their way here. Co-champion in the steer wrestling, Brett Witt, giving his best, 19 years old. 4.20 for the young gun. No show is too big. And a great run. That steer, they were 3-7 and broke the barrier on. Brett does a good job right there, scoring first. Riding up in there, watch him catch his steer's head, stay square, and lets that steer come by him and finishes. Great flat fall, great run by Red. That's Witt. big time stuff, Kate. With the conviction, moves right into the number two spot, and then to send it off. Oh yeah, pumped up about that one, and he should be. Bridger Anderson. Been to the American once before, and a run like that could easily get him back to AT&T Stadium. Clean here, 4.11. Watch this. Look, I know I you saw you talk it. about guys' feet, this and that. How does he manage to pull this off? Body control. Watch how wide his feet get. He almost does the splits right there, but he keeps his hips square. He puts weight on the foot he needs to to get his other leg adjusted. Watch that splits right there. Then he's able to move that right foot back underneath him. Great finish, great run for Bridger. With that time, he slides into the number one spot, just nine one hundredths of a second, separating our top three about halfway through the field. But with Anderson and Witt there at the top, those are two contenders that could go for that 2.1 million. Riley Duvall is looking forward to a hundred thousand dollar payday, but he's got to get there. Oh. oh. And you're going to see it right here if we get to watch the replay. Riley left soon, too soon. He was able to pick his horse up, but he gets broke in. He stood up, steer steps at him, and Dr. Pepper runs really hard through that hole when those steers are crawling under him right there. It's hard to get any room to get in there and get their heads caught. From one junior NFR co-champion qualifier to another, this. Well, we were gonna wait for our next one. We're gonna switch order here as often happens in the steer wrestling. Rowdy Parrott, he's been to the big show inside AT&T Stadium three times before. Is this a steer he can do it on here? Yeah, this is a steer he can, you know, and they've done good on him. They threw this steer in 4.78. Rowdy could speed these steers up. He's so strong. You know, for a small guy, he is one of the best in the game, in my opinion. He's got his brother, Remy, on the other side. And when you can have that confidence, like we see with the Cassidy brothers, it makes a big difference when you have that confidence in right. that team. Right, no doubt about it. If he can get out of the barrier right here, watch Rowdy. Technically sound, and his finish is so strong right there. Oh, I think he might have, yeah, you can see his broke the barrier. Great run again, got off the corner. See him pulling, just pulling right there, not kicking, just sitting, trying to make his horse slow down a little bit, but these bulldogging horses are pretty tough to do that. A uh, parrot punched that line a little too hard, so with the penalty, 14 and 54. Right now he is in because we have seven runs. Top two guys are safe so far. One of those. Okay. 4'11 and 4'19 as we go now to our next junior NFR co-champion that got him in here, Tristan Palavaya. Can he do it? How'd that one get away from him there? Yeah, it just got a little wide. Steer was trying and when Tristan was riding, he wasn't sitting down punching his horse into the in behind that steer's horns. And you're gonna get to see it right here. Kind of out there point, the horse is not wanting to run in there. And, just some tough luck right there. The steer was real average right down the middle and just raised his head. Tristan couldn't get in behind those horns. Kalabaya catches more air than he was wanting to there. It's gonna be a no time for the 19 year old. He'll be back. Well, so here's what we had just happen. Stockton Graves just hazed for Tristan. He is next up. That's one thing I love about the steer wrestlers and rodeo in general. These guys are always out to help each other. You know, it's not them against the other guys. It's them against the steer they have to compete on. Chase Outlaw said that in an interview last night. We have to do the best we can on the animal we have drawn. Yep, I was just going to say that. Look, you see in the bull ride, one guy get off, he's winning. He's back there pulling the other guy's rope. This guy's hazing for each other and, and then vice versa and swapping horses, whatever it takes to give themselves the best chance to win and help each other. None of that stopping Graves on Casper of Tyler Pearson's. Tyler had just went, he's on the other side, Hazen. 
and that is the camaraderie, camaraderie we have in this sport of rodeo. And to another level of that, now the coach putting on his competitor hat, what other sport can you have your coach still compete with the best of them and prove to still be at that level? Yeah, that's exactly right. How, how awesome is it that somebody that has trained you has shown you the ropes and you get to go down the road rodeo with them? And he's going to say, let me show you how it's done. Oldest invited steer wrestler here. Oh, Graves wants to get another one after that. It's going to be a no time for Stockton Graves here. You know, and that steer with Curtis Casty had ran him earlier in the week, left pretty sharp. You can see the barrier break right there. Stockton got out of there a little too soon, and then that steer let off, and Stockton caught him high, and he moved away from him. He couldn't hang on to him. It's going to be a no-go for Graves on a Friday night as we go to another contender hoping to keep that $2 million dream alive, Jason Thomas. Now, he finished first in the semifinals. He's had the best run inside Cowtown Coliseum. This arena has been his. Can Thomas keep it that way? Yeah, and this steer is trying on a little bit more than his steer the other night. Ryan Monroe, horse of Ringo Robinson's a great mare. And Thomas, you know, he's seeing where he's at in the, in the draw. He knew what he could do to make it back, and I believe he is safe with that run right now. Yeah, go take that ticket to AT&T, Thomas. 5.06, number five spot. That is safe. We'll see him on Sunday. Five steer wrestlers left to go. Top 10 are coming back for the big show. Trell at Bauer. Sight set on being one of those 10. Good run by Terrell right there. Missed the bear a little bit. And we've seen it happen in all the time events. Things can go bad down there, but Terrell, you know, weathers the storm, gets through it. We'll see if that's going to be enough to get him through, though. 5.78. He's sitting right in a bubble spot right now. If one more guy goes below him, then he'll be safe. Etbauer exits, hoping it's going to be enough. As we go now to a guy you know well, three-time world champion, Tyler Wagner's path. You know, this guy to me is as impressive as they come. He's the Casey Field of the steer wrestling. He can make a bad one look great, and then my other guy's like, I want that one, and then they get you know, stomped on. That's Tyler Wang's path. But on those good ones, he'll speed them up even faster than you think he could. And of course, it takes the athlete, but it takes the horse. Casper, he's ready. You know, great steer right here. They've been fast on the steer. Hangs a leg a little bit, but it's not gonna matter. But he's still 4-2. He got the start he needed, got his feet on the ground, and does what Tyler Waggis Pack does. Yeah, why is Waggis Pack won in the world so often? Because of this. 4.24. He is safe. He's got another chance. You know, his head catch and his feet work, there isn't anyone out there rodeo right now that can do it better than that guy. You're taking a look at the leaderboard of the steer wrestling. The top seven are coming back to AT&T Stadium. The bottom three, they just have to wait and see as we've got three steer wrestlers left to go. The next of those, Dirk Tavernier. Yeah, Dirk Tavernier, the thing about him, first NFR qualification last year, I believe he won four or five go rounds. He did not look like an NFR rookie. Has a good chance tonight. If he gets out of the barrier, look out, he could be fast. Take him down, Tavernier, 4.54. That's going to put him number five overall. He did it? No. He did not because 14.54 with that broken barrier. That took him from number five going to the big show right outside of that opportunity at number 11. Yeah, and you can see when he's finishing that steer's nose, he's looking over his shoulder. Did I leave too soon? He knew he was close, and unfortunately for Dirk, that's not going to let him advance. Final two left to go in the steer wrestling. Jacob Talley. Watch this, guys. Great finish. That steer wanted to kind of hand Jacob his head. You can see it really bowed around him. And guys getting a bind to get that nose too early. Jacob was very patient. Let that steer clear by him and finish. We're going to see it right here. Good start. Getting off, setting it up. See that steer throw his nose at him? Jacob let that nose come up, was patient, and then finished and got that clean fall. Tally is your reigning American champion. 
And now here he is again with another shot to go back to back. Tristan Martin was so impressive last year at the national finals, riding this horse at Gage State. FedEx. I'm, I would love to see Tristan be able to continue that momentum on into the American. He's got such some family support. You know he has a chance right here. Has to be a 13.98. If he's clean, if he gets it oh. down, he's going to Sunday. Can Martin make it? Yes, he does. 6.66, and it's clean. Martin does everything he needs to. Last to go, and it pays off for Tristan Martin. Yeah, you want to talk about hustle. His feet got tangled up. He knew that, okay, all I got to be, because he backed in the box knowing the position he needed or the time he needed to be. Great hustle by Tristan Martin. There's a look at who's moving on. One of those, Rhett Witt, is standing by with Anthony. 19-year-old uh, Rhett Witt coming into a situation like this, an opportunity to win $2 million. What kind of advice were you given by your surrounding partners? Like, I mean, I've been down here all week with my uncle and my cousins and just practicing, getting ready for this, and they're just helping my mental game to stay focused and just get a steer down. The adrenaline is still pulsating through your body. You, you showed me your hands earlier, and you, you got them tucked in your pockets because you're still shaking. Was that the most exciting moment of your life? 100%. If you win $2 million on Sunday, do you think you'll shake a little more? Oh, yeah. <laughs> He's 19, and he has a $2 million opportunity. He is your man from Nebraska, Rhett Witt. Well, Rhett Witt is showing you this rodeo is truly anyone's for the taking if you step up. And young barrel racer OCM Valu has done just that, making waves in the arena and winning us all over. My name is Océane Veilleur, and I'm from Quebec, Canada, and I'm 16 years old. I started riding when I was 8 years old. My dad was watching some barrel race, and he was like, we need to try that. This is my dream. I wanted to come here, ride with the NFR girls tonight. That is going to be awesome. you want your baby girls to grow up to be cowgirls let them know let them be like Haley Kinzel three-time world champion two-time reserve champion and that all started on the American platform inside AT&T Stadium there's no cowgirl no barrel racer like her can she be a four-time American champion it all starts right here tonight inside Cowtown Coliseum as we go to the barrel racing presented by Polaris. Kinzel is going to be the second one out, so get ready for her. Justin, are you pumped or what? I can't wait, Luke. Me either. And one thing about Haley, she'll speak her mind. She's an invited contestant, but she wanted to decline it to have a chance at that 2.1 million. With the way the rules read, she wasn't able to, but you want to talk about a girl that will tell them how she thinks it should be. Well, and that, look, that's what, you know, talking about Casey Field, the greats in sports, they changed the game. Michael Jordan, Tom Brady, these, these great athletes. Haley Kinzel is the exact same way to me. So we get set for the barrel racing. It all started with the team roping, and we had contenders that are moving on. Let's send it down to Anthony, who's standing by with some of those. Yeah, Nelson Wyatt, Tyler Worley. The journey to get to tonight was not exactly how you had planned. Walk us through that. Well, I made it back with Chase Trine, and he made it back twice. So uh, I got to pick who I want to rope with, and of course I was going to pick my partner. Yeah, you guys have been roping all year, and how exciting is it? Brand new partnership, and now to have a $2 million opportunity. It's awesome. I mean, I'm just so glad to get to be here. When I left last night, I thought I was just going home and going to watch these guys tonight. And I was just super excited to get the chance. To go from a small arena like this, it's an extremely fast setup, to a football field. How's the game plan change? You know, still got to score, still got to catch, do your job, and, you know, hope the chips fall in our, our favor. So one of the things the American does is there's no crossfire rule. That means that you can throw your heel loop whenever you want to, or we can, can we expect some faster heel shots from Tyler Worley? I don't know. I've been trying my whole life not to get flagged out, but, I mean, I, I'd be lying if I said I haven't been throwing a little faster at home trying to get ready. Well, they are two of the best, and they have a $2 million opportunity after tonight. They're moving on to AT&T Stadium. Wyatt and Worley, they're one of four contending team roping teams that are moving on, and what a big opportunity they have. The next generation, they're setting by looking at potential 2.1 million. When they're here competing, we'll see just how big that can be. I hope it's 10 million by then. And OCM Valu, she is one of those young guns. You heard her story. She's aboard 
heaven's guy. At 16 years old, she wanted to run with the best in the world. She wanted to run with Haley Kinzel. Well, guess what? She gets to go just before Kinzel. Luke, do you feel like we see more yellow horses since the, <laughs> since the arrival of <laughs> Haley Kinzel at the American? Yeah, sister has had a lot of influence on the color of horses that girls buy nowadays, I think. Heck, I want to get a yellow bulldog All horse. Right. Lou making her way down the alley here. Let's send it to Anthony. Yeah, this young lady started her career just four years ago when she won a trailer in her home country of Quebec, Canada. And last night she was on fire. She knows what it's going to take to do well in this arena. And it looks like she's got one started. Lou, you've got one. You've got two. A little wide on the three, but she's going to push him across the line. 13.675. What a run, especially for going as wide as she right. did around that third barrel. But top of the ground, Justin. Top of the <laughs> ground, man. And look, you just got to wonder how fast could that have been? Wow. Lou taking a breath after that one. Notice she looked back to see the three-time world champion, Haley Kinzel. Another yellow horse, but not sister here. Yeah, this is going to be Jewel. This is a horse that she bought from Jana Brown. And when I, I talked to her about this horse, she said, why wouldn't I run this horse? Because in years past, the fastest run of the barrel racing in the American semis was done by this horse. Different rider, but Haley Kinzel is fully capable to make a fast run tonight. She's the jockey every horse wants, and this is the horse everyone wants inside Cowtown Coliseum. Kinzel takes it across the line, 13.6. Six, two, three. That'll move Kinzel right up to the number one spot. Well, and Luke, to me, what makes Haley Kinzel so great and so special is, yes, she rides great horses, no doubt about it. You've got to. But she rides them great, right? And there is a difference in between just having a great horse and being able to make a great ride on them. And the other thing is, you don't question Haley Kinzel's decision because she has proven to be a champion on anything. Emily miller Beisel. oh! comes in a little too close that first one. She's just going to finish up this run here. Diving in, but we've mentioned it, Anthony. It, it's a close arena. We see that happen quite a bit here on the first. Yep, that's something that we did not expect from Emily. And we've seen Chongo do such spectacular things, but there you see, just barely doesn't get past the barrel. That's it. We talk a lot about this small pattern and some horses thrive in it. We see Chongo do some amazing things inside the Thompson back, which is about the same size. It just didn't work. Sometimes mistakes are made. We mentioned Kinzel winning the American three times. Well, Stevie Hillman, she did it in 2020. She wants to get back there and do it again. Hillman hills him around the second. Oh, you saw she was pushing just one step short. It's going to be a down barrel for Hillman here. Yeah, that's just a phenomenal horse named Truck. And she was going to run Lemon Drop, but Lemon Drop is currently in her breeding program. And, and there you see it again. It's that half a stride instead of a full stride around that barrel to clear the barrel. Constant movement, that is key. And if those horses, they cut that stride in half, they're going to hit the barrel. We've got one more to go before the drag, and it's a veteran, Donna K. Rule. Finished second in the American in 2020, making her way down the alley. Yeah, if you're not a fan of this lady and this horse, then you are not breathing. Donna K. Rule and Valor, AQHA WPRA Horse of the Year, and Donna K. is a fan favorite, and look at her go. Oh, oh, no! She bumped the first, bumped the second, the third, finally came down. And guys, she was going to be at 13.462. But with that barrel, 18.462. But look, she has to get as close to him. That's a great horse, but you can't be safety up and try to go wide around him. She's trying to give herself the best opportunity to move on. Well, it's the world champ at the top, and guess who's right behind her? The young gun that loves Kinzel, OCM Baloo, right there with the superstar. Speed brought to you by Polaris. Laura Moe, the young gun, 13.577 to make it here. And what a great horse. This horse came from the Reliance Ranches out of their good stud. Gary McKinney sold this horse to Bobby 
and Bobby Moat, who works for them. Bobby put the first rides on this horse. His wife, Kate, st Kate started this horse on the barrels, and then Laura start started seizing this horse. And look where they're at now, guys. Laura Mo waiting in the wings to go, but right now the spotlight is on Wiley Mitchell. She's one of our contenders. We saw Ocean Valu at just 16 years old. Well, Mitchell, 17, the future, bright as ever in the barrels. Oh. Wow. Mitchell goes past that first. We talk about not only how tight this arena is, but Anthony, it could just take one life one banner and it's tough sometimes for these horses first time in the arena well it's something a lot of people don't realize is when you come in to the arena that first barrel especially go to if you go to the right is blind so those horses have to find it within a matter of in an instant really and as you can see if if, if they lock on to something else and they don't see the barrel it's not even a mis i mean it's just barely a mistake i don't even know if you can get mad at them for it because it's a blind first barrel Mitchell with that down barrel, 21.353. Slides her number six overall, really because of we've had six that have gone so far. But at the top is Kinzel as we move now to Amanda Welsh, looking for his, her first American appearance. Can she do it here? Lifts her leg to get around that second, hustles to the third. Welsh wills this one all the way across the line. 13.716, that puts Welsh in number three right now. Hey, she was doing some riding up there, Luke. That was some cowgirling right there. And her brother, Bobby Welsh, NFR bull rider, rodeo family right there, and she knows how to cowgirl around these barrels. That horse makes up some quick speed right there, too. Well, Marnie Lou Snort, she's a contender. She wants to go for that two million. She looked good going through the preliminaries in the semis. Can she wrap up her time at Cowtown Coliseum here with a clean one? Oh! Just that half step too close to the second. That one comes down. Would have been a time of 13.839 with that penalty, 18.839. And you know you talk about the fine line because that wall, so or those barrels are so close to that wall, you got to ride them past that barrel, but you can't ride them too far past before you get to start the turn. It's still Kinzel, Valu, and Welsh sitting at the top of the leaderboard. Clean runs. Name of the game right now as we go to Rita Cheney. Great first barrel. The money barrel's good. Ah. Oh. Wow, that's just, you know, coming in too hot on that second. Hit it before she even started to make the turn. Horse anticipating that turn. Like we said, that barrel's so close to that wall. So for Cheney and her horse, smoking gold too, it's going to be a 19-4 with that second barrel down. And this is so tough in, in any discipline when the horse is trained to do it and they start anticipating, you're not the one controlling the run anymore. You're not, and looking at the color of those barrels, it almost blends in with that wall, so these horses have to pick them up pretty fast. Molly Otto, bottom of the ground, but can she make up some time here? She's clean around two. Let's get through the third, looking good for the way home. Otto gets it done, 13.576. Who says you need to be top of the ground? That's exactly right, Luke. Listen, top of the ground these girls love, but that was an outstanding run on the bottom of it. We talk about it in all the events, right? Even when the scenario isn't perfect, you still go get the job done. You have to. That is, you know, that's number one in any event. You have to do your job, whether you're top ground, bottom ground. Molly Otto, 13, 5, 7, 6. She moves to the top. Otto is on fire inside Cowtown Coliseum. More barrel racing when we come back. Welcome back to the American Rodeo on a Friday night. Historically, it is nearly impossible to win the American as a contender. There's only been one out of eight to do it. And who was that? Haley Kinzel, her very first year because she went in as a contender. Well, the next six barrel racers to go hope to change that luck. And Tasha Welch is going to have the first opportunity to do it here. Yeah, and we have 11 girls left. So let's see if they can hold their spot or these girls can get it done. 
You keep it clean right now and you'll be top 10. Welsh wants to do way more than that. Checks up just a touch on the third and it pays off. Sending him home here. Expect a big one. 13. 6-9-0 for Welsh, that slots her into number four. And, and when we watch this back, you watch every time she changes hands, going through this barrel pattern, you watch how this horse stays in the bridle. He doesn't ever fight it, he doesn't run his nose out, doesn't work against her. This is great hands, watch this horse, tug. That allows good body control. Collection, takes care, keeps a horse balanced. It's Laura Moat. You talked about this horse, Luke. And here she goes. She was the top in the semifinals. 13, 6, 8. Right within the competition. That's going to slide her into number four. That was a great run and stalled out just a little bit on the back of the third barrel. But talk about an amazing animal athlete right there. We make our way through the barrel racing one by one. The top of the leaderboard will be safe. Right now, Molly Otto is safe in that number one spot as we go to Cassie Mowry. And the big gray's a little bit wide on that first one. Better on the second. Nice on the third. Wide a barrel on the third, leaves him up. And that horse is flying home right there, guys. 13.877, that's going to put Mallory right into the number seven spot. You know, and with the girls we have left, I wouldn't say that safe. Sarah Rose Waggis Pack, I believe, is one of those that you were talking about. Won the American in 2016, her only appearance inside AT&T Stadium, and she went all the way for the 100,000. Can she go all the way again? Lifts that leg, hustles to the third. What, oh, little bit of a bobble there, but she still makes it across the line. 13, 877, right now tied with Mallory in that seventh spot. And yeah. she got everything she could out of that run with those slips and stumbles and stuff in there, Luke. I thought she did a great job to keep hustling her horse. She did, and you're gonna see it right here. See that slip right there on the back end? That just unfortunately cost her some time. Right now, it's gonna to be tough for her to move on. Oh, she would have been quick. Here's a look at your leaderboard. Otto, Kinzel, Valu, all safe at the top. OCM Valu's going on to the big show. That's, she that's sure really is a awesome. fun yeah. story to watch. Kelly Collier, what a veteran in the game. Coming in as a contender though, bit wide on the first. She went to the left first. What a barrel there on the second. She's got all the hustle. Riding this horse so correct. Pushing him home across the line. 14.063 going wide on that first. Cost her just a bit. She's sitting in that number nine spot. Yeah, and it all started with that first barrel off the left. Just rode by it a little too far. But like I said, Justin, those barrels kind of blend in right there. Salty, I don't know if Salty or Kelly had trouble picking it up, but I have a ton of respect for that family and that horse right there. Just an amazing. More barrel racers to go. Jordan Briggs wants to make a difference right here. So one thing that makes Cowtown a little bit scary is obviously the barrels are really close to the fence. And so this year, with it being the semifinals, then they go into the perfs, and then they're going to have to compete against us. So that's three runs for sure. If you're a buyback, that's four runs at Cowtown. And I do not envy that. I am really excited to hopefully get the chance to compete at AT&T Stadium. It just is an amazing arena and the lights, you know, everybody talks about that. It's just, it's really amazing. So I hope I can get there this year. Briggs, the reigning world champion, she will be up in this drag, but where it all starts is with another one of our young guns. Devin Young is a junior NFR champion, so she earned her way here through winning that junior NFR title. 15 years old, another young one in the field, but looks so composed and collected as she makes her way down that alley. That's really a tone for me. I've got a 15-year-old daughter, and, and to see this young lady right into this atmosphere with the chance of two million bucks that's on the line, this is awesome. She swept the junior NFR, winning the first go, the second go, the average. 
and if she gets another run like that, it'll happen. Look at this horse, pin his ears back, get through the second. Perfect position for the third. Send him home, Devin Young. Yes, yes, Young, 13, 7, 4, 3 right now. That puts her in the number seven spot. What a great team. And to do it at 15 years old. Winda Johnson, time to beat to be in the top 10 right now, 14.063. And such a great horse trainer. She made the national finals and went to the minimum amount of rodeos. Has a couple great horses that she rides. Oh, it tips that one on the way out. Obviously, a barrel will not let you come back. Winda Johnson needed to deliver in a big way, and she would have. But with that penalty, 18-6-5-2. Oh, how devastating. She would have been right there at the top. Winda won't move on. Jordan Briggs, you heard her talking about how grueling it could be to come in as a contender. She comes in as an invited, and she also comes in as the reigning world champion, one of the most tightly contested barrel racing finals we've seen at an NFR. Briggs wants it big right here. What a turn around that first. Tight as you could be around the second, and it's going to pay off. The third, bring them home, Briggs. 13, 8 2 0. Puts her in the number eight spot right now. That second barrel, you could not have got any tighter around this one. And watch her right here. She really picks him up on the back side of it. Make sure she doesn't hit it on the way out. Yeah, you can, you can tell she rides her stirrups a little bit shorter. That, that allows her to keep setting down and driving that horse. Well, Shelly Morgan looking for her second American appearance. Three-time NFR qualifier. 13.877, that is the time to beat. That is a cut line to make it back on Sunday. Can Morgan make it? Oh, she held it back up. It's standing Morgan, one more to go. Push him home. Will the hustle pay off? 13, seven, five, one. Morgan, you made it. Yeah, you're gonna see right here. Started in, hit it on the way in, but she puts her hand down. Barrel was tipping. She just shoved it back over. Wow, talk about some athleticism right there. That's a big, tall horse and a shorter lady to get down there and get that barrel pick back up. That was amazing. The top eight are safe right now. Briggs and Wagyu's pack City nine and ten. They have to wait and see what the likes of Ivy Comrado save it is about to do, and Sabins has always been the top of her game. She knows how to win, and she knows how to do it on big stages. Brings him around that first, oh, knocks it on the way out. It's just a game of inches when you're talking about making a tight, clean run inside Cowtown Coliseum. 18-9-8-3 with that barrel. And with that barrel knocked down, that ensures that Jordan Briggs, the reigning world champion, is going to come back to AT&T Stadium. Well, as we have one more drag, we're going to send it down to Anthony. He is standing by with the young gun moving on, Laura Moat. 18-year-old Laura Moat. Has it set in how big this moment actually is? No, <laughs> not at all. <laughs> not even a little. It's got to be such a neat ride on Red Bull. He truly does give you wings, but the journey with Red Bull, Reliance Ranches, your dad, your mom, Tell us about it. Well, I mean, he's just so special to all of us. He's just a once in a lifetime horse and I'm just blessed that he gets to be ours. And he's an overcomer as a baby, broke his skull, came, comes through with that and now he's helping you, carrying you to your dreams of a possible $2 million payday. Yes, I mean, that just makes it even more special. I mean, nobody was quite sure what he'd turn out to be and I'm just glad that he was able to give a, give a chance. When you ride him and you feel him underneath you, is there a calmness that sets in to know that he is your best friend and he's going to carry you to victory? Absolutely. I mean, as soon as I get on him, he just gives me so much confidence. And it's just, he just has a feeling to him that's like no other. We're so excited to watch you do what you do inside of AT&T Stadium. Laura Moat moving on, and she has a Red Bull to take her there.
Mo, one of four contenders in the barrel racing so far to make their way to AT&T Stadium on Sunday. Can Charlie Johnson be our fifth contender to punch the big ticket? And what a spot to be in. Last to go, know that you have to be 13,877 on the top of the ground right here. Let's see if Charlie can get it done. Charlie making her way to the left first. Hustling around here, you gotta be a 13.877, that's the cut. What a third, pushing all the way home. You're gonna get the hustle. And the hustle has her, 13.840. That's what she needed, that's it. Johnson is just in. Johnson, that 10th spot. What, wow. a, what a position to be able to come in and then capitalize on it like Charlie Johnson just did right there. Oh, Johnson does it. When we come back, it's all about the saddle broad riding and reigning world champ Onion Ring is making his presence known next. At the 2021, the saddle broad course of the year, Onion Ring got the honor. And right or right from Utah, He's built this halter and he's drew onion ring here at Fort Worth for the qualifier for the American, which is pretty neat. So it'll be pretty exciting tonight. We're back and it's the Mac Files presented by Resistall. Well, Kate, we got some great horses to highlight and bull starting with Shady Nights. This is just a great one right here all the time, but Baby Kabitz from Calgary Stampede. This is a really, really good horse. We're gonna get to see Stetson Wright matched up on this one. And then in the bull ride, we got a big time matchup. Liston, he is a handful. The seven time champ of the world, Sage Kimsey's drawn up on him. In the rough stock, it takes two, the score of the rider and the score of the horse or the bull both have to match up and we're already underway here. The saddle broad riding presented by Resistol and it's Wyatt Casper causing a bit of chaos. First one out, he does it aboard Amazon Hills. Yeah, I hope y'all got stretched out, Luke, because the bronc ride's gonna be good. Wyatt Casper starting it off 85 and a half. That's, that's where we're starting. This is gonna, this is gonna get really good, but Look, Wyatt, he, he knows what it's like to win at this level, to win at the American, to be one of those top guys and uh, really good start. Do you still stretch, Luke? <laughs> yeah, and then I pulled the muscle doing it. One thing I want to point out, we have three rights in the Bronc ride tonight. Texas is Friday night lights for football, but tonight is Friday night rights. Oh, got it in all three of the rights coming up later. It was 85 and a half to set the bar for Wyatt Casper, who's won it all before the American. We'll see if Casper can do it again. But right now it's Dawson Hay. His horse, Stampede Warrior, giving him a little bit of a time. But Dawson said, let's do it. Yeah, the old veteran gets a young hot shot right here. Dawson Hayes making a really good ride. And that was so cool, Luke, at the fence right there. A lot of horses get tangled up, have to come off of it the wrong lead. This horse just stalls out and stays good. And we talked about in the bareback ride, these horses are older, they've experienced, they've been to the small buildings, your San Antonio's, your national finals. That's what the difference between these horses right here and some of those younger ones. 23 years old, he's a standout star who's capable of some really big scores. And what about this one for big? 87 and a half. That moves Hay right to the top of the leaderboard. We've loved watching Colby Wanchuk all week long, and now he gets to do it again aboard Business Girl. Yeah, really a good matchup here, too, for Wanchuk. Business Girl, a Calgary Stampede. And, and to your point, Kate, Wanchuk has been outstanding to get to this point. I mean, every test that's been thrown at him, he's aced it so far. Wanchuk and Chase Outlaw to be in the rest Doctor two standout stars. They're just showing how bad they want it. Yeah, and you know, you'd love to see a contender move on, but you'd love to see a contender that you know has got a shot to compete against the best, and, and Wanchuk's one of them. 20 contenders moving on so far to the big show. Can Wanchuk be the first to do it in the saddle drop? Getting a little loose right at the end. 
See that left stirrup kind of wanting to come off his foot there. Things just loosening up. Everything wasn't just snappy and tight the way it was for the first six seconds. Still, though, even with that little bit of a bobble right at the end, 85 and a half, Kate. Yeah, putting Wanchuk right now sitting third, and that horse, 44 and a half. What a mark. Yeah, that's been. Hey, get ready for more of that to come. That, that's the kind of horsepower, bull power, though, that we've got. And, and I love that fact because it gives these guys a legit shot. From one contender to another, so fun to see, too. We mentioned this pool of talent. Yes, we know we have it in the invited, but we also have it with our contenders. Pollock, a guy who's been to the big show before. Yeah, and, and this is a guy who we've been talking about all week. And not only physically is he ready to go, but mentally he believes he can win this thing. Well, that mark out to me started his ride off and watch that horse get in the fence, but keep going at him. And so does Mitch right there. Hey, and this is what a Bronx supposed to look like right here. Big old forelock in Maine. What a cool horse and what a what a good ride too from Mitch Pollock. This is so impressive. That horse gets in the fence, but never stops kicking right there. Just makes his front end turn around and keeps hammering through it. Painted flame. Helped Pollock out there with that one. 85 points, that'll put him right at the number four spot. Well, from one contender we go right down to another. The contenders really here in the Saddle Bronx, they're setting the field the way this draw is for those invited athletes, but 87 and a half, 85 and a half, they're putting up the scores. Yeah, yeah, because here's the thing. These guys could have just as easily been the invited. Shorty Garrett, he's got cover girl taking a couple steps out there. Good finish. Good finish right here, but you can see about halfway through it, he's a really strong spur out. Cover girl stays a little closer to the ground, and, and his, his spur stroke is just a little bit short, just kind of getting about halfway there, not getting all the way to that candle before he gets back up over the shoulder. See, just boom, boom, those little bitty things, that's how you got to separate these guys. So Garrett gets it done for 82 points. He's going to have to wait and see if that's enough. Hold your breath right there, Garrett. Ben Anderson is next. He is aboard Sunglow. Really good matchup here. Sunglow, this is one all the guys really like. Stetson Wright was telling me about this bronc earlier today from Harry Bold. And ben Anderson has been riding really, really good to get here. And has had one of the funner interviews to listen to, too, by the way. Yeah, I'd like to see another one of those, and I bet Anderson would, too. If you're talking to Lucia, you're doing something right on a Friday night. Anderson has not matched up with this horse before. But he sent guys like Zeke Thurston to the pay window with a 91-point ride. He's got the horsepower. This is about to be big. Anderson with the strong finish. Okay, so we've seen 87 and a half already, and, and it was a really good ride. We're gonna jump all over that right here. You can't do it any better. A great brawl giving you everything you want. Honest, no moves, no bobbles, no ducks or dives. Just strong and fired, and Ben Anderson was pictured perfect, Kate. Sunglow has sent so many athletes to the pay window. Well, now Sunglow sends Ben Anderson right to the top of the leaderboard, 90 and a half. The first 90 we've seen, guys, and what a ride. Yeah, Stetson, Stetson was telling me, hey, we're going to see a lot of 90s. He said, I can be 92 or 3 on mine. These other guys are matched up great. They're all going to be 90. Just the 11th 90-point ride we've seen at the American all time. That's pretty amazing stat. Another horse. You were talking so much about Maple Leaf, the guy lucky enough to draw him, Chase Brooks. Yeah, look, this horse has been great for a long time. They've won so much on this horse. Won the American on this horse, I believe, before. Him. Little stumble right there out of the chute. Still getting it on right there and a great ride. Brooks in Maple Leaf. Make it to the whistle. K 
Can they make it to Sunday with that one? 85 and a half the marker. That's going to tie Brooks right now with Casper at that number three spot. Yeah, and, and with these guys, with this group of guys and how good they ride, it's the horse, right, that 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 splits them and, and gets you any kind of separation. You see the stock score there, 41 and a half. Sun Glow was 44 and a half. Brooks shaking his head just a bit, knowing that score is probably going to be right around that cut line with some of the horsepower and athletes we have coming up. Well, Regan Smith was a PRCA Rookie of the Year just a couple years ago. He comes in this time as a contender. He comes in with that opportunity for that possible 2.1 million, and he's going to make sure everything is right aboard Big News. Yeah, good front Frontier Bronc here. Smith doing everything he can aboard this one. Yeah, these guys are just putting on a clinic. It, such a great bronc riding in. And we've talked about it, you know, in the past. They're matched up with great horses, and they better ride to the occasion, especially these contenders, if they want to have a chance to beat these invited contestants. Yeah, and look, he's hustling the whole way through this. He's even, he's even putting a little extra on it. Well, for Smith, he'll have to wait and see what that 81 and a half does. Halfway through the saddle bronc riding, it's a four-time world champ, Stetson Wright, who wants to win it again. He's coming up next. Man, I, I'm a fan of Stetson Wright. I mean, I love watching him. I mean, everything about his game impresses me. I mean, he's a world champion all-around cowboy, he's a world champion bull rider, and he's a world champion saddle bronc rider. That's, that's no easy task. He does things when he's riding that you'd think he really shouldn't even be able to attempt, let alone do. My goal is to win 15. I never thought to stop it being the second best. I'm shooting for being the best. There's a certain level of talent and everything that everybody has, but it's the intangible, that grit, it's the confidence. Whatever it takes to say, I want to win 15 of these. Whatever it takes to say that and believe it. Everybody says, no rough stock guy can beat that. And then, oh yeah, I'm like, I'll show you. I'm like, I'm gonna try. That's my main goal, is to win 15 all around world titles. It's gonna be really fun to, to watch him year in and year out compete. I think he's loving it, and, and you know, that's always the most important ingredient. 14's a lot and 15's a lot, so right now I'm just gonna focus on number four. Wow, that, that is Stetson Wright. He is just fun to watch, he is, so I think it's Stetson Wow Wright. <laughs> some incredible compliments from some of Rodeo's best, and they're right on the money with Wright. Yeah, no doubt about it. Look, he's he's a special dude, man. I mean, he's a once in a generational kind of talent. And, and look, Luke, I know we've got a lot of great families in the sport of Rodeo, and there has been throughout the history of the sport, but I don't know that I've ever seen one like that Wright family. We'll see Wright in a bit. Right now, it's Leighton Green. He's a born joker, poker. And, and look, he he makes a great ride for 10 seconds right there. And you watch this guy's chin. In the rough stock events, your chin can take care of so much. Keeps his chin tugged, lifting on his rein, and setting his feet, and then has a good horse under him. Well, and you talk about the chin tuck without getting your shoulders balled up and getting your weight over the top of them. That was picture perfect with your chin tucked and still being able to stay square up over the top of yourself. 86 points for Green, that slides him into the number three spot. Well, Tokyo Bubbles is the horse. Brody Cress is the rider here. We got a big chance here. Tokyo Bubbles from Calgary and Brody Cress. This is one of the classiest guys to watch ride a Bronx. I mean, he, he just looks great on him. He's got a great style, and now he's got a great horse under him. Cress has been to the American three times before. His best finish came in 2018. He was third with 83 and three quarters in the short go. He hopes those numbers are much bigger here. Tokyo Bubbles with the big kicks. He's got the air, he's got the ride. Cress, oh! 
He's looking up, making sure he makes the whistle. They're saying that he did. I think we got a flag on the ground. That judge may have seen that stirrup get lost before the eight seconds. And we're going to get a great view of it right here. Talk about starting a heck of a bronc ride, though, Justin. Yeah, this is this is really cool to watch. This horse circles away, so you can't see that stirrup from that look there. And this looks awesome, though, right through here. The judge is taking another look with that clock to see if yep. Crest did go the distance. Mother. And they're saying he did, 87 points, so it pays off for Brody Crest, slides him into the number three spot. I feel like they docked him, though, for getting out of control there because that was shaping up to be 90-plus. So we make our way through the saddle bronc riding. Ben Anderson on top, and he is safe with that 90 and a half. He is moving on to AT&T Stadium. We'll see who will be joining him there. Zeke Thurston wants to get his sixth appearance inside AT&T Stadium for the two-time world champ. Do it aboard your first move. Yeah, I, I think he can. And I just love to see these Calgary Bronx coming down here now. It's really cool. It's made all the rodeos better with that stock being here and, and the horsepower that they can provide. Zeke's best finish at the American came a year ago. The third place finish in 2021. Seven time NFR qualifier. What's he wanting? this horse to do here, Justin? He's trying to get him squared up in there. Something's laying on you in there. Because look, if you leave behind, you got no shot against these great horses. Um, you got to leave with them. You can't leave ahead, and you darn sure can't leave behind. For a guy like Thurston, who's got 100,000 on the line if he gets to AT&T Stadium, wanting to make sure everything just perfect with your frisky. Hey, and these horses, they get wise to it, you know. They, they know they can feel it when a guy gets everything set, slide up, they go to pick up on that rein. They know it's go time, and they're getting set. Zeke on the go here. And what a ride he's putting together. You mentioned putting on a clinic, just perfection once again that we see from Thurston. Yeah, the, the judges have got a tough job tonight. And, and the only way that you're able to distinguish between these guys is the stock. You see these numbers coming in. I'm seeing 41 show up for the Bronx, 43 and a half from Zeke. So that's telling you Zeke is better than the Bronx is. And that's what you want to see. You want to see the rider score over the animal. And right there, it looked like Bronk covered a little more ground than some of the other ones, didn't buck as close to the buck and shoot. But Ge Zeke was with him, jump for yeah. jump, just not quite the horsepower he needed. Yeah, just a little bit longer, and Zeke does a great job, though, handling it. Zeke in a precarious position, sitting number nine with 84 and a half, and you've got three rights still to go, and you've got Sage Newman still to go, and he's got Delta Dawn. Well, Sage Newman looks like a home run hitter to me right now. Um, you know, the, with his style, the way he's going at him, the way he's turning his toes out, there's a chance something can buck him off. You know, it's not a safety up style, it's to go for first place style. But in this format, that's how you win $2.1 million. And that's what is on the line for Newman coming in as a contender, qualifying his way through, making it through the semis. Newman. <laughs> What do you make of that one, Justin? Hey, get off before your head comes off. And it looked like he was trying to right there. It looked yes. like his head get to snapping back. What a powerful horse right there. You need to get him one of those bareback riders neck rolls. You watch his hat come off, and that's because this horse, but he never stops, even though, okay, he's lost sight of him at this point. He knows just lift and keep firing at him. And I admire that about him. Horse kind of takes off on him at the end. Newman had the try. It's a 78 and a half for the effort. That is going to be on the outside looking in at that number 12 spot. Right now, the top six are safe. You see it right there. 39 and a half Bronx score with the kind of Bronx that we've seen. That one takes you out of it. Time for the family affair to happen right here inside Cowtown Coliseum. Spencer Rice, first of three of the rights we're going to see. He's got cricket in the big show. Yeah, and this horse is hanging a little bit, giving him time. 
be curious to see where they put this one. Cricket had some kick, but was it enough kick for yeah. what right? Oh, yeah, it was enough. And in a, in a big way, 88 points. It was plenty for yeah. Spencer Wright. Puts him in that number two spot. And this is a smaller horse than what you've been seeing tonight, but you look at the air, the hang time, and then follows it up for the entire eight seconds with that big kick. Well, one right is in. Spencer moving on to Sunday. Can the other two rights join him? Well, right or right, happened to draw the horse everyone wanted, the reigning horse of the year, Onion Ring. I love to see it when you get to match up champ against champ. And that's exactly what we're getting to watch here. Get ready for Wright and Onion Ring to make some magic on a Friday night. That's focus, and that is great riding right there. You know, we've seen that horse stall out in the chute, which right, never lost focus right no. there. Ryder stayed down. You can see him say, come on, let's go. Let's have some fun here. Yep, come on, let's get going, let's get going because we're about to beat 90 and a half points. Hang kick, that's why this horse is bronc of the year. And that's why Ryder is two-time world champ. Right, not only two-time world champ, two-time American champ, he always shows up in this format. Ryder Wright doing all the right things here. 90 and a half, he's at the top of the leaderboard tied with Ben Anderson. Well, two of the rights are in, and Stetson Wright very well intends to be right at the top here. His horse, Baby Kibitz. Yeah, look, Stetson, Stetson's fired up for any stock that he gets to get on, uh, but, but he was a little, little extra amped for this one right here. Time world champ with his shot to move on. Spurs over his reign right out of there and never bobbles. No, and you can see it right there. He gets kind of hung up in it, but he kept moving his feet and got him, got it back on where he needed to have it. Yeah, he just rolled right on through it. And because of that bobble. The judges saw it as well. The horse score a bit lower too. They team up for 80 and a half. Guys, that is outside. Stetson Wright does not continue the four-time champ's journey to the American ends right here tonight. Well, yeah, and I don't even think spurring over his reign was a bobble. Like, he never even let that affect him. He just rolled right on through it, and he just didn't have a horse that gave him much of a chance. Wow. Did not see that one coming right here. As we go now to Tegan Smith, he's got bartender. Oh, bartender, they've won a lot on this horse, but tight circling right there. That was, he handled that really, really good. This is gonna be close, I feel like. You gotta be an 85 to make it back right now. And Smith sails right there, 86 points, it's enough. It's just what he needs right there. And bartender, like I said, this has been such a good horse for such a long time, but that circle's getting tighter and tighter and, and can get a little tricky to ride, the guys were telling me, but Tegan handled it great. As Smith, everything he needed, we will see him back on Sunday. Another guy we will see back, Ben Anderson, one of two 90s we saw in Saddlebron riding tonight, and he is standing by with Anthony Lucia. Ben Anderson, when your feet hit the ground, you were smiling, and you just told me that was your fourth 90 ever in your career. Yeah, sir. Um, there's a difference between uh, just a bronc ride and a 90-point bronc ride. When you get off, you can feel it. It's electric, and that little bay horse of uh, Harry Volds there was amazing, and um, this is awesome. How about it, guys? <laughs> he's, his, he's the best cheerleader ever. But I, I have to assume, being a contender, moving on to AT&T Stadium, that the excitement level and the adrenaline that you're going to be feeling is going to only elevate as we get closer to Sunday. Yes, Anthony, I'm excited to get in that baseball field and hit some homers. Well, it's a football field, but he's from Canada, so we're going to forgive him. <laughs> Either way, Ben Anderson moving on. <laughs> Anderson 
So that was his fourth 90 in his career. Well, he's at the top with right or right. That was his fifth 90 at the American. Hey, and that's a great job. And to his credit, the NFR was at a baseball field a couple of years ago. The props are in the books. They're ready for Sunday. making our way through a Friday night inside Cowtown Coliseum. And athletes that move on, they make their way to at and Stadium. It's the ninth edition of the American. It is time for the tie-down roping presented by Prefert. In this field, five past champs at the American. It's John Dush to start us off. John Dash got a great start, wrapping a hooey right there. What a way to start off the tie-down roping, Justin. Wow, that's a, and look, all week long leading up to this, we've been seeing a good run being the eights. We're just gonna start it off tonight with seven, four. You know, and you have these invited guys. A lot of these guys made a living in this arena right here. I know John has been here a lot of times. He knows the start and he knows how to handle these calves in this situation. Dash does it. That sets the marker, 7.46. And what a run to get things going here. The barrier has been a story in the tie down roping all week long. And we'll see if it continues to be a story here in the contender round. Ryan Ballou, he sure hopes not. Yeah, and Luke, what does this do, that, that big time first run like that being 7-4, what does this do to the field? Well, you know, these guys know that it's gonna be tough tonight. They're gonna have to get the start. Ryan misses the barrier a little bit, runs that calf down. Bout didn't get caught around his neck. Rope gets under his neck and he's just hustling, trying to get through. And then bobbles his string right there. And you know, we've seen it where that may possibly advance, but I'm gonna say with the field we have tonight, I don't think it will. Hey, and watch this rope whack him in the face. Yeah, Blue never Hello. stopped trying all the way through. And that effort gets him a 10 and 43. You know, and see right here, he was still going to be okay, and then bobbles that string, doesn't get that front leg strung really well, and then just keeps hustling through it. That one might leave a mark, and not the mark that he's going to want, but hopefully it's enough to get him back. It is the top 10 moving on. 18 tie-down ropers are in the field tonight. Zach Youngblood looking for his first American appearance at 23 years old. Good start, but now nah, that calf gets on the ground. He has to get him back to his feet. Oh. Then he missed strings him, got in a bit oh. of a speed jam. Still in a speed jam. Now he's going to tie him up, and hopefully he's hoping that the rest of the field has quite a few bobbles. You never know what can happen. It's a 12 and 44 here. We went from a seven to start to a 10 to a 12. That's a tie down rope. Yeah, well, and, and look, you never do, right. I mean, you never can tell what'll happen, but I've got a pretty good idea of what's going to happen with the level of guys that are here tonight. Yeah, for sure. And you know, like we talked right after uh, John went, set the pace fast, 7.46. You can't get in the speed jam when you get that times in front of you. You still got to get your start and make your runs. Especially when you have guys like this waiting in the wings. Corey Solomon getting set in the box, looking for his sixth American appearance, eight time NFR qualifier. Such a fast guy to watch when he gets a good one on him. Yeah, from the horse to the ground to the calf, this guy's about as fast as he gets. And then watch his hands when he gets starts to tie him up. Bobbling calf, straining a little bit, but gets him tied up. Solomon. Barrier. Yeah, look to secure that one there, but unfortunately the barrier gets in his way. 14-15 for Corey Solomon. Yeah, and you can see that neck rope. It was just starting to get tight as he was crossing the mouth of the box where the barrier strung in front of him. We'll have to wait and see what kind of night it ends up being in the tie down roping. Tough luck here for Solomon. But Marty Yates, 
is a man that can make some magic happen at the American. Two times before, he's won it all. Two times before, 2017, 2018, that 100,000. Can he be one of the few three-time American champions? He first has to get to AT&T Stadium, and that comes with a top 10 run here. And that calf squirts out of there, and Marty gets a decent start. Again, that calf's on the ground. It's faster if you can keep him on your feet, but Marty does a good job. Two wraps in the hooey right there. He wasn't gonna go for one wrap. He knows that that 8.53, he got caught up fast enough. That might be enough to secure him a spot. Yes, sir, Marty Yates, 8.53 right now, sitting number two. Gets him rope sharp, and, and look, Luke, like you said, he's not gonna get no rush. He's seeing how things are, are shaping up tonight. He's gonna go make the best run he can on that calf. Yeah, you know, right now it puts him in second place and has a potential to move him on. Here's a look at the leaderboard right now. Uh, you got to be thinking as you're watching this. I got to be clean and I got to be smooth. Yeah, and you, again, you can't be too safe. Right. Some of these calves are squirting. And when you get down halfway in this arena, it's even tougher for them horses to work like they're supposed to. 2017 world champ Marcus Costas had a couple to watch. What a cap here, he is running, but he stays on his feet, quick flank. Now fast hands needed for Costa, there we go. Eight and 92, puts him in third. Yeah, and he had to grit through that run right there. Marcus Hustles does a good job, and see the start, that calf takes off. He got a good start right there, but that loop was kind of sloppy on his neck, and then that calf hits in the rope and takes off over to the right. Marcus has to get back around him with just a tick of the clock when you have to do that. Well, Riley Webb, at just 18 years old, has been in so many big money situations before. He had a chance in the WCRA format to go for $1 million. Now coming in as a junior NFR qualifier, if he moves on, he could have a shot at 2.1. When he had that million dollar opportunity, he just missed him. You know he's learned from that and he's gonna bring it in here. Listen, Justin, that says junior NFR, but this guy can compete with the best of them. And you see it right there. Chris, next shot, gets that calf flank, wrapping a hooey. Great run for Riley Webb. Webb, you said it, one to watch. He was not gonna let that one get by him. Seven and 92, he slides into number two. Yeah, and to your point, Luke, about the junior NFL, I've been watching this kid the last couple of years compete, and I see him win the high school finals, and you listen to his interview then, and you're like, yeah, this guy's, he's gonna be the champ. You know, and his dad, Dirk, said, Riley has done it pretty much all himself. With his winnings, he's went out and put together a great team of horses and has some of the best training in the world, and it shows right here. Anthony, the young guns making waves tonight, aren't they? Forget, don't forget that Riley Webb last year was in that shootout round. He barely missed out on winning the million dollars. Let's go to Hunter Heron. If Hunter gets out of the barrier, he has on this calf fast, but again, the calf goes down, has to get him cleared. Hunter's an old veteran and hustled through that, and that was a great run, especially for having to get that calf back to his feet. 2016 American champion, 8-18. Eight and 18. He's cleaning the line. Heron right now, number three. Great start, great loop. Right as he gets that calf, calf just kind of crumbles. Hunter doesn't panic. A lot of times, guys, he's getting a speed jam. He gets that calf picked back up, strings him, gathers him, ties him up. Heron has to wait and see. About halfway through now in the tie down roping. Well, Caleb Smith, he's had quite a run in the last few years. Three time world champion, the most recent of those coming just a couple months ago, 2021. You see those marks on the leaderboard. Expect something to move when Smith nods his head. Good start, gets it on him fast right there, Justin. And look when he gets that cap on his feet. This is typical case. Or the money. Smith. Right there. Can't be stopped. That's what happens when you're the reigning world champ. Seven and 33. And Luke, and always with this guy, when he's this fast, it looks smooth. It looks fluid. It looks easy. 
It, that's exactly what it looked like right here. And that's what it looked like in the national finals where he won his world championships. Not a bobble, smooth. He almost looks like he should be a little bit longer, but he's so smooth and so quick. That was a great run by Caleb Schmidt. And that was all he needed. Schmidt, we'll see you on Sunday. Chad Mayfield hopes to get there too. He's got the horsepower to do it. Does he have the calf he needs, Anthony? He absolutely has the calf he needs. This is the calf that we watched Hunter Heron run in the very first round earlier this week. Leave sharp, Hunter ran him down. However, when he got down there, he ran through this calf. Leave sharp, this could be faster than what we just saw Schmidt do. Yeah, and Chad's bad to run through about anything he has drawn. <laughs> yeah. It was just two years ago, Mayfield was center stage, receiving a check for over half a million. He qualified then as a contender. He's back this time as an invitee. Can he do it once again? Here we go. Oh, had to reach, but got him. Mayfield making magic. A couple rounds, get those hands up. Seven and 82 right there. Chad Money Mayfield sitting number three. Luke, look, this just isn't fair because most guys can't do this. No, they cannot reach man. this far. You know, right there, he got a good start. Cap was trying, but he really had to do use his long rope. I didn't feel like that horse was charging in there, and that was a great, great run right there by Shad Mayfield. What about Shad? He wants to come back for more and make it to Sunday. Can't say he's safe yet, but he sure is looking good. Tough Cooper can make a mark, as he has done in his entire career, four-time PRCA world champion. Yeah, and on a great horse, Blanco here. This horse came from Kate Swart and Rick Keefer. This might be the toughest horse going in professional rodeo right now, and he's got one of the all-time greats right there riding. Come on, Cooper. Tough Cooper came to compete, seven and 46. He is tied right now for that number two spot. Watch this, guys. Good start. Gets this calf rope, but watch the flank right here. How impressive that. Calf jumps away from him, but Tough was there. Beat him, beat him to the punch, and then tied him up. Cooper, such a controlled run. With that one, guys, we're through the field enough to say he is safe. We'll see him on Sunday. Tanner Green. Young gun that has been so much fun to watch, former Rookie of the Year. He is coming in as a contender. 1244 is what it takes to get to the big show. Yeah, and Tanner came in oh. at the bottom of the contenders right there, but this guy does belong, in my opinion, with these group of guys. Talented cowboy, not only in the tie down, but in the, in the heading, too. Green. Not what you typically see from this young talent. It's going to be a no time for Green. From one contender to another, Trevor Hale looking to make his first American appearance, just 19 years old. And the thing about Trevor Hale, he had two spots coming in from the contender round. So they rolled down and took the seventh place guy. This kid is for real, rides great horses. See if he can get it done. Hale. This arena has been his all week long. Oh! Speed jam right there, you know, and, and unfortunately for Trevor, it started with miss stringing him. Did everything right up to that point, but right there when he miss strung him, then it was panic, try to get him tied up, and speed jam. 11.61, Hale will have to hope for some magic. He's right there, number 10 at the cut line. But Shane Hanchi, is a man that just made it happen at the American a year ago, winning the $100,000 and doing it a big way. The 2013 world champion could very well be in that position again. You know, what can you say about Shane Hanch? He has accomplished about everything in a tie down rubber can. But look right here, Riley Webb, he is safe. Yeah, he's in. The qualifier, he is safe. He is on his way to, Ameri or to the American at AT&T Stadium. And she hopes to join him. That calf stays on his feet, working with him here. Fast hands, one wrap around. And she has it. Seven and 91. Well, this guy's just a great competitor to me, Luke. I mean, yes, he's won world titles. He's won at the American. 
and it's all, look, he's not the biggest guy by any stretch. He's one of the littler guys in this event, but he still does everything so technically right that it puts him in positions to win. It does, and right there you can see it. Good start, good roping, never panic. Like Caleb Schmidt, goes through the motions and still under eight seconds. And Hanchi is safe. He's moving on to AT&T Stadium as we go now to Haven Medjid. Guys, you mentioned Riley Webb. He's our third junior NFR qualifier to move on to the big show on Sunday. The young guys are showing up. Haven Medjid still young himself at 23. Yeah, you know, and talk about a hand from, from Montana. This guy, much like Shane Hanchi, is not the biggest in the field. These calves are, you know, they're on the bigger side. He handles them with no problem. Yeah, you think back to guys like Ricky Canton in, in that era of, of calf roping, and that's a lot what this guy reminds me of. Twenty nineteen world champion Benjamin. Oh. oh, he was trying to make a move right there. Calf ran right through it. That could have been big. Yeah, and he got out of the barrier right there, and one two came across with it. Big loop that Honda kind of hit far back, and when it that rope hits dead like that. It gives those calves a chance to get through it, and that's what we've seen right there. No time for Medjid. He'll have to wait, see if that fourth American appearance can come next year. But Chance Thiessen is another contender, just three remaining in the tie-down roping. Right now, you have to be a 10.43 or better to be above that cut line to at &T. And has a great calf right here. They tied this calf fast in this building a couple days ago, and we'll see if Chance can capitalize on it right here. And Chance is, is one of these young guys a lot like Riley Webb. He's won at every level in his career so far at a young age. Thiessen, oh. oh, just to touch off that barrier, he had to reach for that one. Man. Yeah, and right there, he just missed him, roped him around the ears, and that calf kind of had his head down, was running, and it's tough. See right here, oh. right as he goes to deliver, see that calf's head lower just a little bit. Obviously, nobody's more disappointed than that kid right there. William Wayne Jr. is here, courtesy of winning Guts and Glory. It was a show that's just aired on INSP. J.B. Mooney and company were there taking a group of athletes through the ringer, and one was on top. That was William Wayne. Can he make this happen? Wow, tough luck right there for Humpty. And I want to say, out of the, all the calves we've seen so far, that was the toughest one to me for them to catch. Calf left, squirted out of there, and then off to the left. When they're off to the left and you're chasing them, you're going that much farther down the arena. And when you know you have to tie them fast, you have to take a chance at that shot right there. It's a no time for Wayne Jr., but sure was fun to watch him on Guts and Glory and the other athletes compete as well. Just one to go. Ty Harris sees that leaderboard. He knows exactly what he needs to be. It's a 10 and 43 better to move on. Will Harris have it here? And Ty Harris can tie him fast. You think, guy back in the box, all I got to be is 10. That's not how this kid functions. He ain't going to back off. This kid's a gunslinger right here. Well, he didn't miss it right there. Oh! oh. We were wrong. He backed off enough. That calf felt the air, took off away. Wow. Had to reach, and the reach didn't pay off. It's going to be a no time for Ty Harris. Well, tie down roping is in the books. Top 10 moving on to AT&T Stadium. One of those, Riley Webb. He had a shot at a million before. Now he's got a shot at 2.1 million on Sunday. Webb is standing by with Anthony. The youth contingent that we have seen tonight has been mind-blowing. Riley Webb continues that wave of talent. This will be your third opportunity at the American. We've watched you at Contender with the days of 47 Cowboy Games and Rodeo as a gold medalist and a million-dollar triple crown winner. What is it about million-dollar opportunities that gets your blood pumping? <laughs> I love to rope, and uh, we do it every day. And if we're roping for $100 or you know $2 million, um, I just try to go out there and do the best I can every day, and I think that's why it, um, you know, it, it's easier because just treat it like it's the same thing. When you come into the Cowtown Coliseum, you've ran a lot of calves in here. Is there a level of comfortability that just allows you to shine and take it one step faster? 
Uh, I've run a lot of calves here growing up, but um, the bear's a little different than it is at the stockyards, but um, I love to rope and rope against uh, great competition. I'm blessed to be here. Well, we are fortunate to watch Riley Webb and the rest of his youth cohorts. He is headed for that $2 million in AT&T Stadium. What a big opportunity for Webb, one of 25 contenders that will be moving on so far to the big show. But he's not the only one. Chad Mayfield moving on. Hunter Heron moving on. Marty Yates. What a field it is in the tie-down road beat. The relationship like with a teenage girl? <laughs> Honest answer? <laughs> no, she's great. Cadence has been working at this since she was 12 years old. Hurry, you ain't gonna get there if you don't hurry. And so it's it's ups and downs, you know, it's the struggles, they do real good, and then there's some, some valleys and some peaks in there, and then it's like all of a sudden it all kind of clicks. Having my family in my corner is really amazing. My dad, my stepmom, my sister support me throughout the whole way. There's there's no feeling like it. I'm gonna be so excited to watch her. I'm gonna be so nervous. Gosh, I don't even get nervous when I rope, but when she ropes, I literally, I get sick to my stomach almost. So I know that's gonna happen when she ropes. Cadence Crawford, Anthony set the field in such a good way. She knows all about roping. There's some major smack talk going around the Crawford place right now. And I mean, it's, it's all fun and games right now, but when it comes right down to it, man, we're gonna be so excited. Competing at the American has been a dream of mine since they first started inviting Breakaway Girls. She's doing so great. I'm so proud of her for what she's doing. She's always right there supporting me in every step that I take. Check your body position. Check it, check it, check it. Rope. Not very many people get to compete with their mom. We've always been so competitive towards each other and driving each other to be better. If we're back in the box and it's just the two of us, she's not going to back off and I'm not going to back off either. We have that competitive streak in us and always have. I just hope that we get to celebrate that night together and, and come home and practice Saturday and go back Sunday. It's the American Profile presented by AcraSure. Mom and daughter both coming up in the breakaway roping presented by Cactus Saddles. And guys, they're actually going back to back, but we have to wait and see that later in the field. That is going to be some fun watching to see. Yeah, and listen, when you're back to back in competing like that, they do the practice pin every day. So this should be an old hat for them right here. Josie Connor, just 18 years old, but she's been in so many big money situations. She won the junior NFR at Cowtown Coliseum, and she did that with a run of 2 and 11. Oh, didn't drop over the nose. Going to be a no time here for Connor. Yeah, and you know, first out, having all these superstars, we talked about in the other events, junior NFR qualifier, this girl is talented. We've seen her win big, and she will continue to gain and just make big strides in this event. Bailey Cooper was one of the fastest we saw coming through the semifinals. She roped three of them in 7.72 seconds. You want to see fast? You're looking at her in Bailey Cooper wanting to make her first trip to the big show to AT&T Stadium. Here we go. Good start right there. Got it on that calf. Great run. You know, and the breakaway roping, the last few nights has been one of the most exciting events. These girls are getting the start, taking the chances, and a great run right there by Bailey. You got to believe, and Bailey did, 2 and 51. That is going to be the marker everyone else is chasing and seeing. Well, Haley Pryor, Harley Pryor, excuse me. Believe it or not, guys, 13 years old right here. You know, and, and that is amazing right there. To see her composure that, that she has had throughout this competition has been really impressive. Pryor, does she peak at the right time? Drops off 2 and 98, but is she clean? They're clapping down there. They're cheering. Wow. That's got to be a good sign. Man. What Can a, you hit it any better than that? Great job scoring, too. Right as Woo. she nodded, that calf turned his head over to the right. She had to hold through it, let that calf clear. Great run. Pryor, 13 years old, but roping like a pro, making the moves of the likes of ones like Jackie Crawford. We'll see if that 298 holds up for Pryor. Taylor Munsell getting set. Let's send it to Anthony. And Taylor loves this animal that she has drawn. We watched Catlin Cooper be two seconds flat. This national finals breakaway qualifier, 
can do just that. Leaf sharp, hey, it works. And it works to a two and 94. Look at her smiling. She knows that that wasn't her best loop, but wished it on there. It went on. And right now she has a chance to get to AT&T. The twos are clearly where you have to be. Crawford and Crawford watching closely side by side for their opportunity. Well, Kelsey Domer does it time and time again. In fact, she's been the champ eight times. Expect big things from Domer. Look at that loop. Domer delivers two and 65. That was a pro move for Kelsey. That's some roping right there. Wow. That is some rope. We talked about Caleb Schmidt tied around that neck. Watch that loop right there, sharp, tight. Breaks away. There's no doubt. You know what no. I mean? Like she rides her horse to that spot and then whack. This is what we've been waiting for. Mom versus daughter. World champ versus the young gun who both can rope like no other. This is set up to be good here. Jackie Crawford, 100,000 on the line. Cadence Crawford, 2.1 million on the line. Both looking to make it back to Sunday. And we're going to start with the veteran, the 20 time champ and Jackie Crawford. And the focus right here is Jackie, and we've seen it for years out of her. But how awesome is it, as much as she put in in the years, to come to an event like this, for, have a chance of the money the breakaway ropers have had the last couple years, Justin. Crawford waiting for that calf to be perfect. Hustles up with the swing. What can Crawford do? Catches in a three and 12. You know, that's fifth place right now. Missing the barrier. That, to me, is going to be right there on the cut line. But again, Jackie gets him around his neck, tight, short rope, snaps off. You can't fault anything out of a run other than just being behind the barrier. You know, and, and it seemed to me like when I first started watching the breakaway and paying attention, getting to watch it on TV, there was her, there was a handful of these ladies that were great ropers. Now, they've elevated it. They're coming from everywhere. 13-year-olds that can rope great. Jackie's done it. Can Cadence deliver? What? Oh. Cadence to the top of the leaderboard. Jackie knows it too. She watched mom do it and she said, how about this mama? Two and 20 for Cadence Crawford. Big reason to smile there. She goes to the top. Yeah, starts at the barrier, Justin. She absolutely annihilated it. Blew it out right there. One, two, got it on that calf's neck. What a great run. The Croppers, happy with that one. The whole family cheering inside Cowtown Coliseum. Look at Dad Charlie back there. Fist in the air. Crawford clan looking good for Sunday. Woo, Cheyenne Gilroy taking a deep breath, getting set, couple swings right on and off. It's gonna be a no time for Gilroy here. Yeah, you know, you see a lot of these girls right before making good runs. I'm not gonna say Cheyenne had that in her head, but she knew she had to try him on to make it through. It's Cadence Crawford at the top of the leaderboard. Jackie Crawford sitting number six. Cadence feeling pretty good. Jackie has to wait and see if that three and 12 is going to hold on and we'll keep you updated as they do. Aspen Miller, first American appearance. Oh, horse got right up there, but that loop just wouldn't drop over the nose. Going to be a no time for Miller. Yeah, and you see, missed the barrier. That horse was charging. Then that calf slows up. That kind of gets you out of time right there. You pick your head up, get back in the saddle. Right there, you see, kind of have to pick up, get your horse in behind, and just couldn't get around his neck. Miller not going to make it this year. Sarah Angeloni. What a roper she is. Her and her sister Martha, always putting on clinics. Oh! She was going for it right there. It's gonna be a no time here. Well, and, and Luke, with, with competitors like Sarah going out, that really helps Jackie's case with that three to, to hang in there and, and live to fight another day. 
still 10 breakaway ropers left to go. This leaderboard can completely change. We'll see if it does. Samantha Fulton, man, oh man. No time here. They feeling the pressure of the likes of the 220 from Cadence. Yeah, you know, and Jackie has to sit back there and sweat it out. She's not used to being in those positions. No. She's usually <laughs> up there where Cadence is. But right now, the way it's looking, she has to squeak by about four or five more people, and she's going to have a chance. This is the girl. This is the woman that did it in the semis. She was sub six on three. Catlin Hooper, there's the knock. Did she do it here? Did she get out? Yeah, and you can oh. see right there. That calf, gate open, the calf kind of wallered through there, didn't leave real sharp. Unfortunately, broke the barrier, knocked her out of it. Would have gone to the top of the leaderboard, but instead of a 218, 12-18 here, she was running at it. Right now, she's sitting number seven, but what that did do, guys, Cadence Crawford is in as we go to Joey Williams. What a loop. Two and 91, that's going to set Williams right now in the number four position. So with that, Crawford and Cooper, they are in. Yeah, good, good loop right here. Behind the barrier just a little bit, but in the position she's in, that's gonna, I believe, give her a pretty good chance to advance in, Justin. We're making our way through the breakaway rope and on a Friday night, the historic Fort Worth Stockyards. Peggy Garman, she is one of the contenders. If she advances here, has a shot at a possible $2.1 million. We really can't say that enough. Jackie Crawford mentioned in the future, life-changing money. She's seen breakaway ropers who haven't roped in years come out for an opportunity here. Garmin makes the most of hers, but did she get out clean? They're saying no. Instead of a 2 and 23, it's going to be a 12 and 23. Yeah, and now you're getting into the situation, Justin. There's a handful of girls left. These ones know the girls coming up are going to know what they need to be. Right here, see the barrier. Pigtail drops, plus 10-4. But these next handful, they should have an idea now. 21 total breakaway ropers that we're seeing here in the field. We had 10 come in as contenders, 10 come in as invited, plus our junior NFR qualifier for Morgan Sparks. She comes in as one of our contenders. You know, and if you're in the bottom right now, you see the bottom three girls, Sawyer Gilbert, reigning world champion, Larry D. Guy, uh, just an icon of the sport, and Shelby Basui. Sparks sends this one sailing. Two and 97. And finally, guys, we are clean at the line of one. So for Sparks, that's going to set her at number six. Makes a really good run right here, especially like you said, knowing the position you're coming in, knowing how many's left, really nice clean run. Sparks should be happy with that one, but still too many women to go to see if that's going to make it back yet. Danielle Lohman, what a roper she is. You know, Anthony, you see that Shelby's there at the end. What's got to be going through her head right now? Here's the thing. Shelby's been in this position time and time again. I watched her 10 rounds in Las Vegas compete for a world title, go head to head with Sawyer Gilbert, and, and nothing phases her. Her amazing horse, Anna, AQHA horse of the year last year. Shelby knows how to win. Every single girl and lady that you're watching here today has ice water running through their veins. It's something that most competitors can only dream of. Loman wants to take the lead. Yeah. Oh, but with that one you saw him behind, it would have been a two and 35. She pushed it, but pushed it a little too hard. Loman's gonna leave with a 12 and 35. That is on the outside looking in. Well, as for Jackie Crawford, some of those broken barriers have helped her case with a three and 12. She is sitting as our last clean run at number eight. There are five breakaway ropers remaining as we go next to Aaron Johnson. You know, Aaron's in the situation right here. Be in the top five, be just under three seconds behind it right there, but I think she had a front leg in that gap, so has to be a clean catch around the neck or it's a no time, and that's what we've seen right there. Yeah, Flagger waved her off quickly. Johnson, she had to send that one sail and really reach for it, too. It's going to be a no time right here. 
And that one split the gates trying right there. What a hustle. Well, for Sammy Taylor, she knows she needs to be clean. And she is, two and 69. And a great run right there, guys. That calf didn't leave quite as good. Look at her hold, hold, and then she goes, but when she ropes, that calf slows up. Right now, it's not going to affect her. She's got a spot, but if that calf would have ran through there a little bit more, she could have sped her up her time. Taylor takes over the number four spot. As we're looking at the Crawford to Crawford story, that slides Jackie down to number nine. We'll have to see if the mom of the mother-daughter duo is going to make it on. As for Sawyer Gilbert, 2021 world champion at the NFR this year. Such a roper. This is gonna be big. There's the nod, a couple swings. How about that? Pops off, is she clean? No, she's not. She broke oh. the barrier. No. Wow. Such tough luck for the reigning world champion right there. But I believe that allows Jackie a spot. Almost. 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 Wait. Almost. Wait Move. for it. Because Jackie's sitting number nine right now. There's two left to go. Oh, I don't do math very good. I'm a bulldog. <laughs> Leave the math to Kate. Uh, oh, Larry D is saying, hey, Jackie. Watch this one right here. They have roped together for so many years, gone back to back. You always see them in the leaderboard together and expect big moves from the veteran eight-time world champion. She's been leading the world standings for much of 2022. What a year she's having, guys. Yeah, you can see Jackie right there looking on, knowing somebody at least she learned so much from can potentially bump her to that one spot that can get her out. Larry D asking for them to move the calf around. She knows she's got to get that start to avoid that broken barrier. Yeah, you know, we talk about them all the time events and the rough stock. To get the best go, you want them stood up in there looking out. That way when the gate's open, it's a clean lead for them. Calf settled, she likes what she sees, there's a nod. Oh, broken barrier, two and 41. She knew at the moment it happened to. Wow. But guess what that means? Both Crawford and Crawford, Jackie and Cadence, they're moving on together. They're going to AT&T Stadium. Jackie can't believe it. She can't believe it. I can hear her holler right there. Yeah. She just left a little too soon. And oh. Legend just broke the barrier. Larry D knew it. Shelby Bosley last to go. She's got to run up there, but she's clean. Is it enough? It is. 420 with the last out. It was just what she needed. Shelby is in that number 10 spot. And it's the Crawfords that make their way. Cadence, the number one spot with her two and 20. Jackie, the number nine spot with her three and 12. Mama, you're in. Daughter, you're in. The Crawford clan is happy on a Friday night. Both are gonna have a shot in ATT Stadium and they are standing by with Anthony. Charlie Crawford just came in and gave both of you a hug, and I'm, I see tears welling up in his eyes because of the pride that he's feeling. Could you have ever have dreamed of this moment when both you and Cadence are headed to the American? Yeah, I dream about it all the time. I hope that Cadence goes, I hope Journey goes, and I hope so many little girls that, that rope at the house all the time go. I, I love this moment right here. This is what it's all about. Cadence, when you live with an icon, if there was a Mount Rushmore of breakaway ropers, Jackie's face would easily be on it. Living with her, is there pressure? Is there motivation? Or is she just an inspiration? There's no pressure. She's going to support me no matter what I do, and she's going to be on my side in my corner, and she's never going to pressure me. I noticed at the end there, there was a, there was a few runs there where you weren't sure if you were going to be moving on. Talk about that moment and the moment of relief, now knowing that you get to go into AT&T Stadium to run for the 100,000. 
Oh man, it was just going through my mind. If, if I didn't make it, how was I going to convince Cadence to give me a hundred thousand out of that two point <laughs> one million? <laughs> but now I just need to go home and take some pointers from her on how to drop the start and hang it on one. So Saturday we're practicing. Sunday here we come. We wish you both the best of luck. Both Crawfords are headed to AT&T Stadium. One for a hundred thousand. One for two point one million. Every mama and daughter watching out there right now knows that feeling to do what you love with who you love the most. Jackie, Cadence, moving on. What an American moment. Oh, less than 48 hours away from AT&T Stadium. You can feel the anticipation inside as we get you set for bull riding. Presented by AccraSure. Well, for those of you joining us on Cowboy Channel, in just two minutes, our coverage will conclude there. But we will continue our coverage on Pluto TV. You can find us right now by going to Pluto TV and tuning into the PBR Ride Pass Channel 720. It all comes down to this. It is the bull riding on a Friday night, and the fans have stuck around inside Cowtown Coliseum because they want to see who moves on to AT&T Stadium. And it all starts with Kai Hamilton on glory days. Yeah, this is a good rematch for Kai Hamilton right here. This is a, this is a young Australian guy. He's made the NFR a couple of times now, had to battle through some injuries. Um, lives over at Cody Lambert's place and, and has really just been trying to hone his craft, kind of get his chops up, and he's got a lot of ability. Uh, this, is, this is a good matchup here. Should start to the left, riding long enough, there's a good chance he'll go back to the right. If you want to see the bull riding, this is the time to move over to Pluto TV. Our coverage here on the Cowboy Channel is coming to an end momentarily. Go over to Pluto TV and tune into channel 720 to see how Friday night inside Cowtown Coliseum concludes. Oh, Hamilton almost took a shot right there. Got to be ready in the shoot, you know, especially when it's when it's close to time to slide up. The Bulls, we talked about it, the Bears and Bronx. That anticipation, they know that gate's about to open and then they're going to give it everything. This is the time to make your way over to Pluto TV. We'll bring you all of the bull riding on PBR Ride Pass Channel 720. This will conclude our coverage right here on the Cowboy Channel. Make your way over to Pluto TV. Everyone that is watching on Pluto TV, you get to know the score that Kai Hamilton just put up, and it was a good one. Hamilton hangs his hat on 89 points. Well, this is this is how you want to start the bull riding off right here. This this is an outstanding ride away from his hand. Great timing from this bull, and a great job of Kai picking it up, finishing. This is a rough get off, and trust me, in front of these bucket shoots, we talk about the ground and the barrel racing all the time. Well, in front of the bucket shoots, it never gets worse. People walk on it all night long, and it's like concrete. Parker Bredy wants to be right there with Hamilton. He has alley -oop. Oh, took a shot, too. Comes down in 6.98. It's going to be a no score for Breddy. Earlier in the night, let's take you to the Cavenders ride of the round. None other than the birthday boy, 88 and a half points on top off, and it was a good one. Well, yeah, we started the night talking about what a great rodeo we were going to get to watch. Well, Casey Field got it started off the right way. Another big time ride by the GOAT. It's a good birthday to celebrate for Casey Field. Every day is a good day for Casey Field. Could be a really, really good day come Sunday. It would not be a surprise to anyone. Ruger Piva, he wants to be there on Sunday. What do you make of what Ruger's done? Well, you know, we've seen Ruger come to the bull riding for a little bit, and we've seen him transition over and start rodeoing, and you've seen him have a lot of some success. You know, he's made the national finals now. Um, I think he's a little bit better on bulls that go to the left. Good chance of that here. There's the nod. He hopes for the left. This bull looks left, goes. But Piva 
goes down two. It's going to be a no score here. He comes off in two and 66. Yeah, and right there, Justin, that bull left the shoot, kind of hipped himself. That's an option of a rewrite if we see the judges offer it. He got it. Yeah, he's, he's going to get one. Bull hits his hip, leaving out of there. And uh, we'll see it right here. Kind of wads up in the front, bails out of there, hits it. Didn't really change the bull, but that is a foul. And that's supposed to be an easy call for the judges. Re-ride, no re-ride. Been a storyline that we've seen in the semis. Jose Vitor Lemmy didn't get that re-ride opportunity, but now this now sets the mark for re-rides here today. Well, yeah, and look, that's what you want to see. You want to see consistency throughout an event. If you're not going to give re-rides very easily for bulls hitting themselves or whatever fouls, inferior performance, then you've got to be consistent with that. You know, this matchup right here, Larry Mosley, he got wrecked out last night, got stepped yeah. on. That's got to be running through his mind, but when you're in the shoot, you just got to ride him. Great bull right here, too. This is one that Kimsey was just 92 on in San Antonio, but I'm not quite sure Mosley's over what happened last night, either mentally or physically. It comes down at 1 and 31 on Ole Sun. Yeah, good, you really can, a good day from this board. Like I said, Luke, yeah, go ahead. You can see the look on his face getting up. That hurt from today, but I guarantee you what happened yesterday is still hurting him. Yeah. Mosley making his way out of the arena. For Josh Frost, what a year he's had. Yeah, still limping out there, you see Frost. Been at the top of the leaderboard much of 2022 in the world standings. 2021 was the reserve champion. This is the year for Frost, and what a time to be going at the American. Well, there's a lot, a lot to like about Josh Frost and the way he rides. He's got a really good understanding of the foundation that it takes to be a good bull rider. And then mentally, he is very focused, and he trusts in his ability. Oh, raises him up right out of there, though. Comes down in 2.08. Frost doesn't pass the finish line right here. That is going to be a no score. Yeah, tough start there. And no luck. He's wanting to talk to the judges about it, about that bull hanging his horn right there. For Chase Outlaw, he nods his head in here. It's fireworks, it's a battle, it is a big time show, and here it is aboard Bubba G, a chance to do it yet again. Yeah, great bull right here. We've seen this bull a lot at the bull ride from Chad Berger. Anytime you get Chad Berger's bulls, you know you know you got a chance to win. Bubba G likes the left, will step ahead a little bit. And as a bull rider, you've got to be aware of that. You can't just rear back and start diving over there to the left. You still got to maintain your upper body. Chase is a competitor at every level. What a place to compete. Big score here can be going for 2.1 million on Sunday into his hand for Bubba G. Chase. Oh, man. Oh, comes down just early. Seven and 86. Oh, no. Yeah, yeah, hey, Damn. that's bull ride. It looks so good for about six seconds. Yeah, and this one's a handful. Big, strong bull, a lot of front end to him. Outlaw is a little bitty compact guy. He doesn't have a lot to give with that riding arm. You see, he's still good left to right, but his hand pops out of his bull rope. He had nothing left to give that bull. And you know, with his time, because if we don't get enough qualified on score, he has a chance to advance on time. Now, no bull rider wants to do that, but it is a chance for him to get to the yes, ATT Stadium. Yes, for sure, Luke. Great point. And with this set of bulls that we're seeing, that, that is a real possibility. Oh, he's wanting that one back. Ty Hamilton, 89, only one on the leaderboard. But yes, remember that buck off time for Chase Outlaw, 7.8. That could come into play in a really big way. Nasty Wishes is the bull. Dinner Barbosa is the guy who's drawn him here. Hey, Barbosa has got a real shot. This bull's a little fire plug, really, really good. And here's the thing with me with Barbosa. If he keeps his head down and stays in the fight, this guy can ride any of them. 
Barbosa has been to the American just one time, but was unable to advance out of the long round. And, and, and this is actually a fine spot to be in with this bull got his head down. It's not like the bareback riding or the bronc riding where you got to get your feet up over those shoulders to start your ride. It doesn't matter. As long as he's not leaning on the gate, you, you are fine to nod. And you can see if he is leaning on that gate, they're going to try and get him off because when they open it, it releases that pressure. That allows the bull to fall down. Nasty wish want now. Barbosa says, let's do it. Gets down quick. Gets himself back up, though, in position. Can he stay? 7.88, the time on the clock. And with one qualified ride, you got 7.88. Outlaw was 7.86 or something, I believe. Uh, you know, and, and look, there's, there's a chance. These guys still have a chance. And I said if Barbosa could keep his head down, he gets top heavy right out of there. But you cannot fault the effort from him right here. He gets tipped over like he's in the bareback ride and never quit trying. That, that was a big effort from Barbosa. We'll keep an eye on those buck off times from Barbosa and Outlaw halfway through the bull riding as we conclude what an incredible Friday night at Cowtown Coliseum, but still fireworks to come. Being halfway through the bull riding, though, does mean Kai Hamilton with that 89. He is moving on to Sunday. He's going to have a busy weekend at ATT Stadium. Yeah, and, he, and he's going to be glad about it, too. And <laughs> look, here's now we're starting to get into HD Page, DNH Cattle Company's Bulls, Cool Whip here, and Trey Benton the third. This guy's been riding good for a long time, Luke. I've been really impressed with, with just the toughness that he shows. Yeah, I've been around the PRCA, made the national finals many times. Has his hands full with this bull right here, though. No doubt. I mean, you've seen the bull. Right. Which one would you say you don't have your hands full with? <laughs> and, and look, Heath Stewart has done a great job of putting this set of bulls together. Oh, bitten aboard Cool Whip. But Cool Whip has a final say. He goes down at 1 and 52. Yeah, and, and make no mistake about it. Like, these are tough bulls. Yes, they're pretty ranked bulls but they're really, really good too. Like that one right there in Cool Whip. This is everything you want as a bull rider. Fire out of there, kick over his head, leap in the air and start turning back. Well, Bitten will have to wait and see. If we do go down to buck off time, you sure want more than a one in 52. Yeah, yeah. I would, I would think so. Yeah. Uh, Braden Richardson next to go. He's got Brewster. Brewster, DNH Cattle Company. You start thinking about back about the great Bruiser, one of the all-time great bulls, and uh, this one's got a lot of that same look. I'd be looking for hang time, turning back right here, close. Those are those pretty picture moments. You ain't a kid. Those snapshots. Yeah, Bruiser. He's been courtesy a lot of those. Brandon Richardson would love nothing more than a picture-perfect finish right here for Brusta. Brusta into his hand. Oh, it was staying there, but got the better of Richardson in 5 and 72. Yeah, and it's got him a little strung out on the end of his arm, so he starts making really big moves. Like, now it's just turned into all about getting to the right, getting to the right. The bull feels that, feels that momentum shift, feels the weight shift. Smart bull jumps away from him. Big time bull scores. 46 for this bull right here. 44 and a half, excuse me. That's, that's still a really, really good score. Well, Richardson is in the same boat as a lot of the guys. Has to wait and see what happens with qualified rides and buck off times. And Mason Taylor, when he is hot this year, he is hot. Yeah, and look, Mason's a little better on bulls going left, but he is improving on bulls going to the right. Alakazam, his dancing partner, into his hand. Taylor takes it to him. Stay into the right. Ow! Oh. Takes a knock at the end, but he'll pop up after that because he knows he's gone the distance. Taylor takes that one to the pay window. Hey, that's why you wear points. 
Hey, Kate, I thought Justin was riding that bull right now with us in the booth. <laughs> what an amazing bull ride right there by Mason Taylor. Great effort right here. And sometimes you got to be willing to pay the price. you got to be willing to take that shot. You know it's coming, and it's how bad do you want it. Mason Taylor, this guy could be a real threat. And Taylor just delivered the sixth ever 90-point ride in the bull riding all time at the American. Now, who could very well be right there with him, the master of big moments, Kaiki Pacheco. Yeah, and, and look, he's got a, this is a bull we've got to see a lot from HD flight risk. We get to see HD's bulls early in their careers. Through the ADVI, you see them as a three and four year old. So you get to watch these bulls develop and mature and, and then get to start seeing them at this level against these great guys. And Pacheco, if he can keep his back straight, keep that hump out of his back. He's so great at tucking his chin, but at times he wants to tuck his whole head when he does, puts a C in his back, and then he struggles on bulls going to the left. Pacheco wanting flight risk to be just perfect right there in the shoe. Yeah, and this bull's standing good. He needs to not. And there it is. Into his hand, flight risk with the airtime, Pacheco. Yeah, all day into his hand. Look, and, he, and he's a little bit back right there. That bull's not breaking over and kicking a whole lot. Just hanging in the air, so it's holding him a little back. But this guy is so physically strong that it doesn't matter. 84 points, Pacheco punches his ticket to Sunday. Yeah, nice ride here by Pacheco. This is. This has been on the softer side of the bulls that we've seen. He's still a nice bull, uh, but Pacheco's gonna chew that one up every time. Just lacked a little bit of kick right there. Yeah, just didn't quite have the, the snap and the intensity. Pacheco, number three on the leaderboard. That doesn't matter, you gotta be top 10, and he is. Freak Young wants to go to the big show for the first time. He's aboard Tested Groove. Oh! I tell you, I was so impressed watching this young guy at the past NFR. He puts out a lot of effort. He's kind of a taller, lanky kid, but he's got a great feel. He's got great balance. You see, he doesn't take deep holes. It's the exact opposite of Pacheco. He's not a guy that locks down. A lot of movement up there. Really a good bull that puts him down. Yeah, gonna be a no score for Creek Young as we move now to one of the most winningest competitors we've ever seen in bull riding. Not only seven PRCA world titles, but two-time American champion as well. Once he did it for $433,000. We're talking Sage Kimsey. Yeah, look, this is, this is one of, I say one of, no, other than one guy, Donnie Gay, this is the best bull rider that you've ever seen in the PRCA. The titles bear that out. And well, for Chase Outlaw, Outlaw there, Kate. guess what? He might not know this, but he's in. He's coming back to Sunday with that buck off time. Someone's yeah, somebody might already tell him. I want to see the reaction. <laughs> Man. Poor Outlaw. Outlaw in on buck off time. You'll know when he knows it. Right now, he wants to see what Sage Kimsey has in store. He's got a handful. Liston is a handful. He's big, strong, mean. Got a little bit of intimidation factor with the guys a little bit. He's going to have some moves, but you ride him to when he turns back, you can go win the round on this bull. But you've got, hey, look, this is a bull you got to want to get out of the shoot on because he's never going to just stand like a show cap in there. He's going to be trying you a little bit the whole time. Nice, here we go. That bull, that bull just went up a notch in my book. I thought the bull had the upper hand to the left if he goes left, but to the right, I, it's hard for me to bet against Kimsey in that scenario, and that bull just put him down going to the right. You do not see that happen to Sage Kimsey very much. That's a great bull. Kimsey comes down aboard Liston in 4.8. 4.8 is important, though, because when we don't have 10 qualified rides, it then goes to the buck off time. We'll have to see what the fate is for Sage as we go now 
to the four-time champ. We already saw him earlier in the show. It did not go his way. He wants that ticket to AT&T Stadium. Stetson Wright, he is aboard Magic Carpet. Yeah, good matchup for Stetson. Look, Stetson, I always like Stetson in a matchup because of the effort that he has. Will he do it here? Right. Off quickly. And even when the effort is there, if the fundamentals are off, it's not going to go your way. Wow. Not the night for Stetson Wright. Comes down in the saddle bronc, comes down in the bull riding, or just didn't have the score rather than saddle bronc, but comes down early here. Still has that smile, though. You know, Man, what a guy to watch. And who would have thought we would have the American at AT&T Stadium without Stetson Wright in it? No one. And no, we're disappointed. Yeah. What do you think goes through that poor kid's mind oh, right man. now? Yeah, I mean, and that's the that's the thing when you mix them up in here and, and, and shuffle them up. You've got to get the job done here to be able to move on. Clayton Sellers, Outlander. Can they do the dance? Oh, what a cool little ball around the corner. Comes down early, 3.96, that buck off time for Sellers. That was just pretty steep out across there. Raises him up, puts him down. Well, Sellers comes down, which brings us now to Dalton Castle. We told you Outlaw's in on buck off time. We'll keep you updated as we fill those standings with the rest, but surely we know there's going to be a handful that are coming back on buck off time. Castle, that's not how he wants to get back. He has every intention of making this big. Yeah, and look, this isn't like we've talked about this before. It's not like, oh, well, I only got to stay on four seconds or five seconds or something. When you crawl over in that buck and shoot, you better mean it. Well, I like what you said earlier about Dalton Castle. He does not get intimidated by no. anything. No, he's, he's not one to back down from a challenge, that's for sure. Castle, Charmer, jumping out, going into his hand eventually, but Castle comes down, 6 and 43. Not an easy bull, hop, skip, no. kind of kicking. No, but he rode him through it, too, is what I was so impressed with. And a big around the corner, you see him cut loose with his feet. They're kind of bouncing. It's all kind of wild. And he gets leaning back, just making those big moves. He feels everything coming left and thinks, I've got to get there, got to get there. But he's in great shape. You don't have to lean back and pick your head up. Castle, that buck off time, 6 and 43. We'll have to wait and see. But let me tell you this, guys. So he is in. Castle's in based off of buck off time. Dinner Barbosa's in on buck off time. Chase Outlaw's in. Parker Breading is in, all on that buck off time. As for Ruger Piva, this is his rewrite opportunity. It's easy day. Well, Ruger is definitely hoping the bull lives up to his name. I don't yeah. know if that's going to be the case with this set of bulls. Not an easy start. Oh. And man, how came down quick. Piva not even a second to the ground. Yeah, and, and look, if you're Ruger, you're like, ah, oh, I needed to take advantage of that one. Got a little more smile right there out of Chase Outlaw. Yeah. Well, that does wrap up the bull riding. Anthony standing by with Mason Taylor and Chase Outlaw. Chase Outlaw, you were disappointed with your performance, but your mood changed just a little when I told that you had officially made it back in, but you said it didn't change anything how you felt right now. Oh, yeah, I'm still aggravated that I bucked off that bull. I mean, just come up a tick short, but like you said, uh, it's a clean slate going into Sunday. Just got a day, day to rest up, and let's get after it, make it happen. Mason Taylor, you've been riding so hot, and I don't know if it was the broken jaw or what. You go five for six at the World Finals, but it seems like you have taken your bull riding to another level. What's the reason? Uh, just, you know, getting the job done every time. Uh, I've been letting some things uh, get slip away from me in the past couple years, and uh, I've kind of matured a little bit, just worried about getting the job done, not worried about nothing else. In those moments, Chase, right after your buck off, 7.8 seconds, 
Can you explain the feeling that you had when you thought that that 2.1 million had slipped through your fingers? Well, I was pretty aggravated. Yeah, I was. Yeah, I probably shouldn't say what I was thinking, but um, yeah, I was aggravated. But um, you know, it was the outcome, and that was it. And it was time to live with it and just see what see what happened. And here we are, going into good little jackpot for a Sunday <laughs> Sunday afternoon. Would you consider as two contenders this is a jackpot? Obviously, the World Finals, the million dollar bonus in the PBR. $2.1 million in one day. Do you think about the money or just think about the ride? I just think about not letting go. <laughs> I mean, that much money on the line, you can't let go. So I know me and Outlaw are going to try as hard as we possibly can. And uh, however the chips fall, they fall. But I know me and him are having a hell of a time. And I know you are a huge fan of Chase Outlaw, as we all are. How good is it to see this man riding at the level that we always knew that he could be? I get to walk in the locker room and be just a little bit better on Sunday. That's it. Mason Taylor, Chase Outlaw, they move on to AT&T Stadium. Both of them contenders, both with that $2.1 million on their mind. Oh, and they are pumped, too. 35 contenders are moving on. You heard it. Taylor and Outlaw, some of those two. Look at that leaderboard of who's moving back. Seven coming back on buck off time of bull riding. Yeah, that's pretty amazing. You know, good set of bulls. Look, I can promise you when they get to AT&T, the bull power is going to be just as tough. Guys are going to have to correct some things, get ready to go Sunday. Biggest surprise perhaps to come out of Friday night. It's Durango wreck of the round and it's Stetson right. Well, yeah, and not really a wreck here. It's just Stetson didn't have a horse that's really going to let him be a lot of points. I think the wreck is not seeing him advance. Exactly. Two opportunities and went down also in the balls. Yeah, just upper body gets back. That effort's there, but the fundamentals aren't. The four-time champ will be back, though. He sure will. That's the Durango wreck of the round. That was a low light, but so many highlights on a Friday night. We said it was much anticipated. An incredible rodeo is what it was set for, and that's exactly what it ended up being. Great to have you back up here with us alongside two-time world champ, Justin McBride, five-time champ, Luke Branquino. It's been fun here in Countdown, guys. I'm Kate Harrison. Let's recap the contender round Friday night and start with the birthday boy, Casey Field, the six-time champ, doing what a six-time champ does. Well, yeah, and exactly what we've come to expect from Casey Field over a decade of dominance from this guy. To see him still doing it at this high of a level, it just really is amazing. Field finishes strong, and he'll be there on Sunday. Riley Webb has a shot at $2 million on Sunday. Yeah, and how impressive has this kid been here? But not just this year, for the last couple years. And the WCRA having a chance at a million bucks, and then coming in tonight, showing these you know veterans how to do it. So many magical moments, and one that every mom and daughter or dad and son sitting at home was able to witness was that of Jackie and Cadence Crawford, both mom and daughter moving on to Sunday. And we'll take you through here, starting with Jackie. Yeah, and right here, Jackie behind the barrier still gets it on him, but she had to sweat it out. But right after her, stepdaughter Cadence gets it on, sticks it on that calf's neck. But the most exciting thing, guys, going to AT&T Stadium, Jackie has a chance at 100,000, Cadence at 2.1. Look at that, great start, sticks it on that cap, and nobody's happier than Jackie right there. Proud mama moment, dad Charlie, proud dad moment too. They're both coming back. We set it up to be big, and it was. Now they were back to back at the semis, or excuse me, tonight at the contender round, and guess what guys? They've already drawn for the long go on Sunday. They're back to back again. Jackie Crawford will be out number nine, Cadence Crawford will be last to go at number 10. Yeah, not only back to back, but the last two to go. That's, that's going to be something to watch. Oh, man. What moments, what drama we were able to see this week in Cowtown. I want to get both of your reactions to it. Some big contender moments and then some big moments like the likes of uh, Casey Field and Jackie Crawford. Well, yeah, and that's the great thing about this event, right? The American. It is it is bringing the invited against these contenders. Um, and for me, I think the big highlight is, yes, the, the invited were great. Casey Field, guys like that, they were awesome. But 35 contenders moving on, and, and they are 
real contenders. They have got a legit shot, Luke. Yeah, you know, my highlight is the junior NFR contenders that came in, you know, young kids, young, young women, showing these older people, I could get this done. And that's what they did tonight. And I'm excited to see maybe one of those junior NFR kids hold up that $2.1 million check. That was just like OCM Valu said. She said it was her dream just to be here and compete with the likes of Haley Kinzel and Jordan Briggs and all of the NFR qualifiers. Well, her dream to compete, now she's moving on to AT&T Stadium. Such big moments. Yeah, it really is. And now we get to see can they handle that pressure moving forward. And that pressure... We'll have to wait until Sunday. It is worth repeating. It all comes down to that. You got to join us on what could be, what is the richest day in Western sports. And that coverage begins at 1 p.m. Eastern inside AT&T Stadium on Sunday. 35 contenders have a shot at $2.1 million. The payout is huge, and you won't want to miss a moment of the action. Come join us at AT&T Stadium. Go to AmericanRodeo.com. Get your tickets today for what is sure to be the biggest, richest day in rodeo. For Jess McBride, Luke Branquino, Anthony Lucia, and our entire crew, I'm Kate Harrison. Thanks for watching.